on my field. on my field. Who you kidding around? All that hating still can't bring me down. Matter of fact, look how I'm living now. Can't give you figures, it's a big amount. Spanish woman with me sipping crown. I'm just here to have a look around. Get to work, I'm here to lift some pounds. I'm on another wave, a different sound. I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but act like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse, I'm ready for war I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything Now you be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk up their body Another one body, that's just how it go I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes Stay in your lane, I to stay on the go I came to play with the pros and act like a rookie So they overlook me, then I double up again, none of their nose None of them cold, they just got lucky but never adapted So I'm to the one if it's coming to blows My enemies cutting it close, I let them think that they got me But what do you know, I had them beat before we ever spoke I'm ready for smoke, I need to know everything Who in the what and the where, I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but act like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws, to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. Now they ain't go harder than me, they need a blade and a sheath, a shank and a piece, a crate full of heat, an army, a fleet, a tank and a jeep, a navy, a sea, where they some marine, an ace up they sleeve, a team of marines, a freak on a leash, a beast with an appetite, razor for teeth, and still they will lay at my feet, boy you got the wrong one, I gotta look over all of my publishing statements for Q1 as soon as the song's done, I gotta call up my mama and tell her I made it as soon as my log's done, I gotta read all my trade publications and sit my tea till it is all done, I think it's all fun. I need, uh, I need everything, I need all of everything yeah. You a simp, you ain't in my lane, you a lame Bitch, get out my way, out my way 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 Look, whack ass locals say the most Do the least okay Behind my back to my face in a peep okay but that be outrageous admit you did the least okay step out to the nines my three piece ain't got a crease okay it's okay it's okay kill on them capiche okay i be damned if i just made my money over beats okay free to lay chips out on the tables time to ante up damn it bruh you be liable to lose the phantom She's okay, risk it off for what to lose, like it's okay, can't relate, always had your best before you reach okay, I'm center stage, heavy risk, ever did, my investments aging like a pessimist, benefits, and you know that my resume is a heavy weight, yeah, put it on my back, give me everything, yeah, I need, uh, I need everything, I need all of everything, yeah. Every event has a bracket of death, where fate forces a lion's share of the league's top killers into harsh battles, just to survive, just to make it out of the prelims. Because only half of the league plays on Sunday, and Sunday is the only day that matters in pro paintball. At the NXL Lone Star Major in 2023, the top three teams overall all came out of the same bracket. And in the final battle for the win on Sunday, it was Houston Heat versus San Diego Dynasty, a rematch from the second major event last season 
where Dynasty dismantled Heat in a 7-1 Mercy Rule victory. This time the finals will be a more contested story. No Heat and Dynasty's roads to Sunday went through the same bracket. The roads to the final match took different routes. Since the COVID break of 2020, San Diego Dynasty has been driving a stake into the hearts of the other top teams' dreams of dominance, winning more than half the events. But what has made this run so special is the adversity that they faced along the way. And Texas was no different, as they dropped their very first game in the prelims on Friday against Infamous. The Dynasty had a clean run through their... Welcome here, 2023 NXL Mid-Atlantic Major, the third big tournament of the year. Matty Marshall here alongside Rich Tufford, and we are about to start the very first battles in the prelims here in, that, in this magnificent field. The conditions are great. Perfect paintball weather right now, a little overcast, a little outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Infamous taking on Legion Impact and Rebel here in this first set. So, Rich, Let's talk a little bit about Infamous. They looked very much improved, making it all the way to the semifinals at the last event and losing a one-point match against Houston Heat, who was dialed in at that last event. Talk to me a little bit about what you're seeing here, Los Angeles Infamous. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing here. Obviously, they're, they, they, they played well at the last event. It's, it's really, for me, like the look on this first field, right? This is a much different field than the first two layouts, right? So uh, there's going to be a lot of different looks. And I'm really interested to see Infamous's take on that because they have so many talented players. You can see there Nate Schrader yeah. on your screen coming back after a couple years of dealing with some very severe shoulder injuries. Look for him to beat the attacker on the D side. And for Infamous, they are missing a couple of their key first attackers here, Rich. Who are they missing? And they don't have Zach Patient. Ooh. And they also do not have Jonah Jamrose. That hurts. They're one, two, eight. I, again, I'm sorry about the cookies. <laughs> sorry yeah. about the, and Jamrose family, thank you so much. The cookies were amazing. So it's going to be up to uh, Tim Russell back there, also on your screen. Yeah, they got so many heavy hitters. You know, even though they're missing those two key guys, they still got lots of depth <clears> on the on the roster. Yeah, and then also Sam Silberg. So <clears throat> look for those three guys as the first attackers. They're they're twos, they're threes, very solid. Even with the loss of Cody Minkowski. Um, they're taking on Red Legion though. Red Legion very disappointing. Starts uh, start 16th overall here for Legion with a 19th place at the first event and 11th place at the second event. A little bit better for them. Uh, and a little bit of a rebuild, right? I mean, yeah. it's not a full rebuild, but they're bringing new guys into the roster. They, you know, they they have had all four of their like starting guys for each of the events, so they haven't had not a Russian line, but only four out of five of them. So they're trying to develop their uh, young guys, their up and coming guys. But they definitely have struggled more this season than we have seen them struggle in the past. Well, with Kirill Peridny, uh, Karzlev, uh, Sergei Solnysko, Alexander Burtnikov. I mean, these are some of the greatest players. To, uh, these are all stars. So Ever. with yeah. those four. I mean, we're just expecting even, you know, just whoever they're throwing out there is the fifth body. But that just goes to show you how difficult it is with the top 20 teams in the world in the NXL Pro Division. So we'll see here. Mind. Can Legion get some redemption and start making their way to another Sunday appearance? At, you know, we just we haven't seen them out there so far here in 2023. We'll see with Infamous if Infamous can step up and Legion drops some of these first, player, first attackers. Yeah, so great off the break shots for Infamous dialed in immediately here in point number one. Of the Mid-Atlantic Major, a couple repositions here, Snake side. As yep. we see our eye in the sky, is Legion going to be crawling up here into this pretty huge snake structure, Rich? Talk to me a little bit about this snake and what do you think is going to be working out here on the snake side? Yeah, we saw a lot of points of the snake this week, last weekend, Maddie, and it's 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 not your typical snake. It's got a large bunker on the 50. It's almost like a two snakes, right? There's the outside wrap on the 50, and then there's inside wrap where you can go into their snake kind of undetected. But it's really hard to see where that guy goes once he gets in there. So the back center guy can see the guy release, the, the god or the uh, spot bunker can see the guy releasing the snake. But once they see him get in there, unless he's shooting at you, you don't know where he's at. So a lot of times a guy will get in there undetected and shoot three or four guys, Matt. Yeah, undetected. That's going to be the uh, one of the key words here of this weekend's battles. Uh, so, yeah, both teams here with the player in the snake is Russell back. In the snake right now for Infamous, and a little out, a little more out wide than Legion. Legion tucked into snake two and shooting down that big gap there in that snake structure from the 50 brick. Yeah, I and like Russell back playing up, up front for Infamous much more than I like him playing in the back. So there's the battle here developing on the snake side on your screen. Russell back and Infamous there in the yellow and black, and they're starting on the red side of the field, and then Legion on the blue side. Five on four situation here currently in favor of LA Infamous. Yeah, both teams trying to not make a mistake because the, winning the first point is so crucial in these matches. It just gives you, you know, a little bit of advantage going to that second uh, point. 
And that's, you know, all we're looking for is tiny advantage. I think Brett Messer got Yeah, shot. I was going to yeah. say the same I thing. I think it's I was four looking, on four, Matt. Yeah, I think it's a four on four situation. And uh, Legion also with a little penetration on that D side, getting out into D2. Listen, it's early. We're going to miss the body here and there. Okay? Well, uh, Messer, we're 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 look, I was looking over the pits. I was trying to count the bodies. And I was like, wait a second. I think they might have lost a body because, you know, those little nicks on your pack you don't yeah. feel because he was asking, hey, yeah. was I hitting my pack back here? And like, yeah, man, it's right here. So who's going to be the next body to drop is the question here with Brusselback still outside <clears throat> the Snake 2. Yeah, with Infamous having three players dedicated over here on the Snake side and only one on the D side, Red Legion with two D side, two Snake side. So again, four on four, but different positions. Infamous favoring the Snake side, Red Legion favoring the Dreer side. Schrader still at D1. Brusselback has some help with two more bodies his way as they have a body at the spot can, and then I think that's Barrett outside wide at the cake. Uh, Britnikoff's also mirrored up that move with uh, Barrett, and then here comes a move past the 50-yard line here and trying to get the crossfield shot as Karzlev in a real good position here for Legion. Great move, too. He, he backed up off and accelerated and dove right past the blue bunker into the red Dorito side, Matty, so that he didn't get caught crossing that big gap over there. That's That gap between those two Doritos, Matt, is... At least six, seven hundred feet. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's tough to get across. It's pretty it. big. And now getting into the 50 yard oh, line, Snake wraps around and is actually look. going to get shot. Yeah, on his first look. So body coming off right now for Legion. And here comes a couple moves. The Schrader is going to launch. He's trying to find Karzlev on the D side. Nate's looking for it. I think he might have caught. And he actually fully has to commit to trade his body to do it. They're going to lose another, another body. Yeah, so Silver comes off as well. So Nate Schrader and Sam Silver taking the walk. And there goes another one as Callie Rudolph is going to get shot cross field from, I believe, Sergey, who dipped in to D3 during that chaos. And he's the last body left alive on that D side here currently. Barrett trying to do damage control. He comes over to the Aztec as Sergey passes the 50 yard line. He's going to be able to get the pinch here on Barrett. Tim two Russell two, back, Matt. though, still alive. Two on two as a sea of infamous players walk off the field, Matt. Five on. Two to a two on two here. Oh, beautiful kill there on Sergey. I'm pretty sure that was Barrett. It might have been Tim. And then they're going to eat up Burtnikoff as well, too. So the first point as a little bit of chaos sets in with that nice move from Nate Schrader yeah. to try to crack it open on the D side. He did get his man. Silber came off during that as well, too. They lost Cali with the move up on the D side from Sergey. So nice go. But then Sergey loses a gunfight. And then it was a two on one situation. And they immediately shot uh, Burtnikoff as well, too. Yep. And great close there from Joe Barrett. Realizing he had to uh, get that key kill on the Drito side. Save that point. Well, that's Barrett is so good at that, right? I mean, that's where Barrett excels. He excels in those moments. He had we've seen some decent offense out of him. He's his game is becoming very refined. And he was pretty clear about excelling in all aspects of the game, Matt. That's all good. aspects. It's good to see. We're in the pits right now with Legion. Need to figure that one out. Next up, though, it's gonna be Edmonton Impact and Baltimore Revo. Revo rebuilding this year as well, too. They got a new owner trying to get some uh, some free agents. And I like a lot of these pickups, but you know, it's been a rough one so far for Revo here at the first two events. 15th at both of the first two events. And Edmonton Impact uh, taking eighth at the last event, third at the first one, ranked fifth overall, starting out here, point number one. Impact and about? Revo are both doubling up that back center to go heavy guns, Rich, and it does produce a kill for Edmonton Impact, and they get Axel God in all the way past the 50-yard line. Very aggressive breakout here, and he's going to get that inside kill. Yeah, Revo, Revo got to be careful not to get a penalty there. Yeah. Maddie, how do you think about the, what do you think about the pace of that first point? The infamous point? Yeah. I thought that's kind of what we're going to be seeing a lot of this weekend. I felt for the first point of the game, it was kind of a long, slow point, which might bode to more long and slow points. Going yeah, but forward. then we see impact yeah. burst it open quick. They shoot that wide body, get Axel into the snake. He gets that free kill inside. Laval very quick on the go right behind him. And then here comes uh, Jackson, Fuzzy Jackson, filtering I, up to that 50 brick. I love this for impact. And I love this for play call from Dave and from Bart because no one expects impact to attack early on this first point, go right into your snake, wrap and get a couple kills like that. So they're just really, really leaves Revel off balance going to that second point. Like, oh, are they going to come hard again or are they going to do their usual sit back and cross it up? Yeah, this was a real solid point yeah. here for his almost uh, impact by first degree murder here yeah. in this yeah. first point. Certainly at least second degree murder, if not first degree. <laughs> well, they, you know, they got. No, that, that was premeditated. It is first degree. Well, both teams double up that back center, right? And it does produce a kill for impact, yeah. does not produce a kill for Revo. They get that outside kill. But then it, I couldn't, I think it was a play. It was a set play. Didn't look like a read. Maybe it was a read from Axel, but he was already past the 50 yard line as soon as i looked at the kill for revo and head checked back to see where impact was <laughs> axel a little speed demon he's already in you know snake. popping up yeah. past the 50 in the snake uh and then he gets that you know, moves up a bunker gets that free kill inside they just had no idea that that he was that far off but yeah. that's that's the power of this snake side if there's no one in their contend 
uh, and you are unaware that there's a, a player. I mean, it's a it's a huge snake structure with a forest of bunkers that there's runs the length of bunkers, the field. Yeah. <laughs> so up into point number two here. Infamous up by one, kicking things off. Russell back snake on the break for Infamous. Red Legion taking Dorito three over there. So big bite on the snake side for Infamous and Dorito side for Red, Red, Le Red Legion. Five on five for both teams as Brusselback gets the 50, wraps and puts pressure on Snakes. That gets his first kill on Malloy. Much better field gets position. Second kill. Be better field position and some damage right now as Brusselback is feasting here in the Snake. Thomas Taylor, the veteran, he gets up to that 50 yard line, brick in the center. Better field position on the D side for Legion, but it doesn't really matter right now as this Snake side is completely blown open. And yeah. Infamous with three bodies either at the 50 or right behind him is uh, looks like. Barry is also right behind. Like, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of this combo. Well, like You're on the snake we, side. Like you said, if, if you get in the snake undetected, right? Yeah. You do a lot of damage. Cause yeah. If you make your shots, and he's gotten four. Russellback's feasting right now. Yeah. Five on one here. Infamous is probably going to pull this point out. Yep. That's a solid point there for Infamous. Yeah, and a good opportunity for Tim Russellback and Nate Schrader and Sam Silberg, who are going to be the main attackers. Uh, for Infamous um, with no Zach Patient and no Jonah Jamrose. Also, fast point there, not giving Revo a lot of time to kind of recalculate after that first impact point, Matt. Yeah, that that is a definitely, you look at, <laughs> if you lose the first point like Revo just did, <laughs> you want some time. You kind of would like a couple minutes to hey, discuss with Help a brother down. out, right? Help a brother out. Give me some time to figure this but out. Clearly, we don't know what's going on. Unfortunately for them, a <laughs> little too much Tim Bustle back out there as Infamous yeah. uh, just demolished Legion to go up by two. And now Revo didn't have much time to talk about that first one. So impact up by one. It went pretty fast, so there still is a ton of time left. Yeah, they weren't even done making excuses about that first point, and they had to go back out there to play the next one. Revo changes to two and two, Matty. Impact six with two in back center. Snake on the break again. Revo knows they're in the snake. Center brick is calling snake side. Impact dropping their first player, and Nick Laval takes a pack hit, draws a penalty. Ooh, so. penalty. Oh, and another penalty. Yeah, it pulls off Reeser. So yeah. it's just Zupa by himself over here on the snake side. No one is, the, is in there with him quite yet, but there goes Omara. Omara into the snake, and here's the battle here on your screen. Who's going to be the one to prevail as Omara is going to try to dunk? On, it looks like he does. Gets that kill on Zupa. Tries to stay penalty, alive, man. but he's going to get a penalty. It's oh, going to be a major, a major penalty, major. Rich. Out. So two penalties in this match, major and minor. Major really hurting Revo. Revo should easily win this point, but now it looks like it's a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-two, -on -two, Matt. Yeah, players repositioning is, looks like Cornell, Justin Cornell going to be coming over here to try to count the bodies in front of him, figure it out. Velez, Rob Velez. On uh, back on Revo and playing against his former team with uh, impacted a little time in the semi pro division, but sure he's been you know, looking forward to this opportunity. Yeah, I, I talked to him this morning. He looked very intense and fired up and ready to participate here in this battle. And uh, it's just him over here on the snake side versus Justin Cornell. Yeah, one on two impact uh, has the advantage here. I think, it's, got a, I think it's two on two. Oh, yeah, two on two, two, on two. Buddy. So small Dorito for Revo and the uh, small brick on the first snake with Velez. JC's in the snake corner for impact. And I can't see, but maybe Brandon Cornell. No. Little tactical retreat. Yeah. For, I think that's Darula. Okay, yeah, Darula over there on the D side. Looks like Revo's taking the offense. You know, they've got, they both got two, but Revo's going forward from the center brick to the center tower now. Looks like they've kind of lost him. Cortez, Silos Cortez, new pickup for Revo this year. Hunting. Yeah, he's hunting for it. I like the moves that Cortez has been making here as. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, two-on-two -two situation. No one out wide, really, on that D side. I don't, yeah, everyone's just trying to figure out where the bodies are yeah. right now. I don't, with all the chaos that just yeah. set in with those penalties. Oh, and look at that. Cor Cortez gets the shot. Well, and now it's a one-on-two -on -two situation, and yeah. Cornell sees that death, and he's going to be forced into attack, but then he gets eaten up as well. Nice little two-pack there for Cortez. And a, a great job by Rob Velez and Silos Cortez to win this point here for Revo to tie the game up. For sure. And that's the point that they need to win, because usually Henry Sens is in there kind of helping him win those points, but he's out injured this event on crutches over here on the sideline, helping more as a coach as, than as a player. Yeah, it's uh, lots of injuries out here midway Dude, through the season. I don't want to blow this. Like, it's it's a tough sport. <laughs> like, if you're <laughs> fragile, you might want to find another sport like cornhole or something. Yeah, I mean, Because people are breaking left and right. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, some of these guys, you know, Henry Sen's been doing this for a long time. Um, guys like Dalton Vanderbilt, you know, he's out for, I think, at least three months. Um, had to have surgery on his elbow, which he played with at the last event, so he's... <laughs> with, like, a golf ball on tough as Yeah, tough as a golf ball nail. slash grapefruit. Yeah, and then, you know, as we go through, we'll be mentioning uh, who's down bodies on certain teams, but it it's some teams have been getting beat up a little bit more than others as far as injuries, but that's why you carry deeper rosters if you if you can afford it. If you, <laughs> you can know? afford it, yeah. You can keep eight, ten guys around. 
ideally 10, then there's a couple guys, next man up. If it's oh, and oh. Red Legion both taking big bites on Dorito's side. Red Legion gets all the way to that Dorito 40, Matt, as they now attack the snake. Red Legion with the snake and the 40 center tower, two in the back. Infamous with four in the back and one at the wing on the snake side. Still five on five here, Rich, as, Pars uh, as Karzlov gets past the 50. But four on four, Matt. Yeah, four on Three four. Three on four, Matt. Yeah, Le Red Legion advantage. Yeah, but better field position here in this four on four situation for Legion as they have uh, bodies either at or past the 50. But look at this, though. Karzlev, okay, I thought for, for a second that Karzlev was zoning up here on his own guy in the snake, but he's going to whip his gun around and start shooting downfield again. Communication always going to be important out here <laughs> with the chaos that we're going to see on this layout. Yeah, if Miss makes two really good fills out to the snake side, Matt. Uh, Joe Barrett goes out to the snake corner, and Russell Beck goes from the temple snake insert into the uh, snake brick. They can both play defensively much better from those two positions, Matt. A lot of time left, 9.30 to go here, Legion. Fighting with a two-point deficit. Great field position for him currently, though. Two bodies in dominant positions on that D side right now. Sergey's going to get past the 50-yard line, uh, line as well, too, and go to the wedge on to infamous the side of the field. Four on three advantage here for Red Legion as Red Legion is trying to break the zone. Rich, I like how proactive the snake player here for Legion is being. He's kind of been all yeah. over the place. And then they're going to get shot on Brusselback. Putting Infamous in a real tough spot Snake here. He doesn't know the corner's hot. Yeah, Karzlev's all the way on their side. Uh, Schrader gets peeled off as well, too. And they're going to have a one-point game. Good job for Legion all across the field. Yeah, just dropping Malloy early there. Other than that, no mistakes. Full control, yeah. And I like that aggressive break. They took they took that Dorito 3, immediately went to Dorito 4. They took the Snake. Infamous kind of sat back on their two-point lead, thought they'd just cross it up and burn some time. But if you want to cross it up and burn some time, you've got to get to the, at least to the points that Joe and those guys came out to on their secondaries on the snake side. You cannot do it from the pocket. Rich, always the question on every layout is how de how, how much defense can you play? I mean, how how defensive do you think you can get? A couple, If a team goes up two, three points, right. you think they can sit on that lead can and milk play it? defense? Yeah. Yeah, this is a field you can definitely cross up, but it, you got to get a, a couple forward bunkers, right? you got to get, like, the wing or the Dorito over there on the Dorito side. and. Mm -hmm. and one of the notches over here on the snake side. But the back center can kind of shut down both tapes. The center brick can shut down both tapes. The, the the two can, the can, the insert bunker on the snake side can kind of shut down either tapes. There's lots of variations on defense out there. We just didn't see it out of Infamous on nope. that last point. No. Nope. So that's going to be a question we're going to continue to ask here. Tie ball game right now, one to one here. Ebbets and Impact in Baltimore. Revo is Revo going to go into the snake off the break and a big break for Impact on that D side. They also get. Axel into the snake here on a delay, slight delay, so they're actually mirrored up. Five life for both teams, Maddie. Revo trying to get crafty here. You can see that eye in the sky all the way out wide here with Caleb Abel. Leaning down, they're going to get the kill on Nick Laval in the backfield here, so it's going to be a four on five situation in favor of Revo. I couldn't see if it was Caleb that got that shot, but if that was, that was a great shot. He crawled out to the middle of nowhere and just was playing that uh, blind spot out there. They just caught him, though, and put him back in. So, again, five on four advantage here for Revo. Revo talking it up and rolling some guns. Yeah, playing a little defensively here, Matty. A little the bit. guy's kind of setting a trap. The center brick guy's trying to shut down the D side. And the three guys in the back are pivoting between tapes. Well, they sent Caleb in early here offensively into the snake. And then he was being very proactive in there and trying to get creative. But, yeah, just uh, maybe try not to squander this one body advantage they currently have. Better field position on that D side, even down a body here for impact, though, as they're out into D2, out wide. Jackson's going to filter out behind Axel. Axel into Snake 2, still mirrored up with Caleb. We're looking at the blue side here. This is Baltimore Revo. These teams will be switching sides if a point is one. If there's a no point, they will stay on the same side. So Revo currently here on the blue side. Matt impact Jackson, on the red side. Matt Jackson making a good fill going from back center to that spot can, but I'd like to see him fill from then again to the corner or to the brick and the snake so that if they lose the front snake guy, they don't lose all that real estate, you know? Because once you get, that's kind of the pocket right there is that edge. And if you're contained in there and they get penetration, it gets hard to get back out of there. Caleb now sneaking to that 50. Let's see if he can capitalize here. And now the move from Caleb takes out Axel. Does he stay alive? As referee's giving him check, looks like he's clean so far. He's going to be shooting that inside lane. Might have got clipped there, and he did. He does have Omar right behind him, though. As Omar's at the 50-yard line here to take over the attack with four bodies still alive 
for Baltimore Rebel, looking pretty solid here in this point. Would like to see a little bit more penetration on that D side for him, though, right now, Rich. Yeah, well, honestly, it's uh, as close as the score is, right? Four on two advantage here. You probably want to grind. Assuming you're going to win this point, you probably want to grind this out a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, if, if possible. Clock. You also want to make sure you get the point, though. For sure. Oh, there Sean, he goes. Four Sean, on one. Yeah, four nice. On one. Sean Salcedo making the move up to the tower. Looks like he might have got that kill. And here comes a big dynamic move, though, as it's one. Matt Jackson. Gets two. Beautiful job by Matt Jackson. Gets a little two-pack here to make this one interesting. Still Horrible a little work to do. He's got a body, a body in front of him, but I think that gun's down in the back corner. Horrible zone control. So Matt Jackson going to try to commit. Yeah, the, the player for Revo in the back corner bunker, his gun is not working. And he's not talking to the guy on the other table. I'd be screaming like a little baby. Help me. Help me. Okay. Oh, but the Jackson is going to yeah. get picked off. It was, hey, that was. He needed to just keep going. If he would have kept going, I think he would have got it. But he it. doesn't know that that gun's down. But, but you have to keep going, right? You know what I mean? Like, If he had committed, he would have run down Velez in the back corner bunker and then had to deal with, I think, Geiger over there on the D side. Can't see who that is. No, maybe Cortez again. I think it's Silos. Maybe Cortez, yeah. Uh, but you had to deal with Silos over there. But still, that was the a great read. Great move. A great move from Matt Jackson to try to make that try to turn move. the tables on. He got two pack, but unfortunately for him, did get killed cross field by I believe Cortez. So Rebel gonna take a slight one point lead. We are seeing some interesting points. I'm kind of digging this layout already yeah, and though. It, and it's not playing as slow as I was afraid it was going to, so that's very well. We got some well. time here, Rick. We do, we do. But I'm I'm at least seeing some optimism with you know taking the snake on the break. They can take big bites on the Drio side. We haven't seen anybody go through the middle yet, but I'm thinking that's gonna be coming up. <clears throat> Legion here on your screen. Down by one to Infamous. Still time to work with. Starting from the red side. And on the breakout, doubling up that back center and right into the snake. But looks like Infamous is going to do the same. And a little bit of a big bite on that D side, getting all the way to the wedge here off the break. So aggression for Legion. Let's see if it works out for them, though. They do not get a kill, but they do take a ton of ground. Infamous might have got a shot on that tower, Rich. You yeah. see the tower? He's yeah. getting a little frog in there. And Got him. Yeah, so that's what we saw. And it looks like a penalty going to be called. It's going to take two bodies out for Legion. That's not going to help. And we oh. called it. We thought Red, Red Legion might be trying to get up the middle. Infamous drops their first on the drill side, now getting a check on the snake side. And the penalty is Brussel back oh, in the red one. And Ryan Hall, sneaky. Ryan Hall with an uncharacteristic early death on the D side. A major penalty on Brussel back. Wow, that pulls, pulls off. Everyone, Everyone essentially is. Messer comes off. Thomas Taylor's arguing with the ref a little bit and just kind of looking around in confusion and just a horrible turn of events there for Infamous real quick. So Hall dies from the D side. Brusselback caught one, draws a major. That pulls off. I mean, did they pull an extra body? Maybe that's what Thomas is that's asking. Thomas did somebody else get three shot? For one instead of two for one. But I think one of the guys that they were going to pull had a hit on him. So he's eliminated already. Well, it's making it a little interesting here. Tie ball game 2-2. Hey, man, this is pretty good for first match of the day. Yeah, these guys definitely had the coffee this morning. Warmed up and ready to go. 8 o'clock was the start of our first set. Man, we got an awesome day of prelim, prelims. Uh, battles going down here on center court. Diesel and Uprising next. Aftermath and Saints. But we still got a lot more time left to go here in this set. And the field is playing pretty fun so far. Yeah, just uh, with the way that this... And we already have seen it. I just think there's going to be a decent amount of chaos. Oh, out there's here, Ridge. chaos for sure. So there's always chaos, but some fields are a little bit more methodical than others. You got to do this. The last a, couple a, B, fields, you know, the get, last get to couple layouts have been very slow and methodical. Yeah, this one not as much. A little bit more of a chaotic layout. Really, like all the layouts <clears> are different. <throat> all the breakouts are different too, Maddie. You know what I mean? Like every single breakout so far has been a little different. A much more conservative break here, Rich. As much more impact. -like. Impact, yeah. Impact going pretty much pocketed up, doubling up that back center still. But not producing any kills. Oh, that, got, and doubling got, up that back center is gonna get is gonna cost him a body. He caught one, he caught two, and he might have drawn a penalty. No. Nope. But no, yeah. but they went heavy guns and yeah. they didn't produce any kills. And then Whereas stayed, Revo and takes then all the ground the and they stay in the pocket and it costs him that body and in they that back center. It. Yeah. And again, if that guy gets to the 50 snake unmolested, then like he's just gonna get kills, right? And that's where he is right now. He's past the 50 here for Revo. And here comes Salcedo. He's going to come across. A little tactical retreat on that D side for Impact. But Revo drops a body. Not maybe. looking good for him. Oh, as Impact drops another Maddie. Yeah, Impact does lose down another body on that D side. So just, yeah, down to two. And they're gonna actually going to be down to one right now as Jackson gets shot out of the spot can. So just one body left alive at the tower here for Impact as Reeser is going to try to do a desperation run. And no one picks up Trevor Reeser. He runs all the way through. He finally ends up getting punished. But not before he took some ground. It's not going to matter, though, as Rebel going to coast to a two-point lead. 
Yeah, they dropped that first point quick and then figured it out fast. Yeah, Impact's getting caught in the pocket too much. When, I think if Impact switch back to offense, they'll start scoring points. Well, with again. that roster that they have, I mean, the two 15th places, that's underperformance considering who they have on that roster. Stop Even it. though Henry Sense is hurt, yeah. um, you know, they picked up Geiger. They got Sean Salcedo, who had played on a lot of top teams the past couple of seasons trying to find a home. Uh, picked up Silos Cortez and Caleb Abel. I mean, Revel is yeah. really trying have to on the put a, you know, hyper-competitive roster out there. We just haven't seen that in the first two events, but we have definitely seen it in the last three points. Let's listen in real quick here. Here comes Axel. I'm winding myself yeah. talking so much. Yeah. Hey, Steven, I need more comms out of you. Okay, would you like? Four, five. They look focused, jumping into this next point here, tie ball game. Right now, Infamous and Legion as Legion goes right into the snake. Infamous also trying to get into the snake, but Russellback is going to get shot off the break. And here comes Legion. With seven minutes and 40 seconds left to go here, Rich. Yeah. Big bite into that center pin, Matt. I haven't seen anybody play that yet in practice or at the, obviously in the event so far. So interesting look. He's shutting down the D side, so they're going to try to move up the uh, Drill side to get a shot at him because he's locking down the snake side. Red Legion now with another big move to the Drill side, Matt. Red Legion's doing a good job of getting out of the back line, of playing for the, from the 40s and 50s, where Infamous is playing kind of in the back more, Matty, with all three backs hot. Yeah, I mean, they have been sending Russell back pretty much every single sing point to the snake. Yeah, yeah. But I do like the creativity we're seeing, the diversity in the strategy here for Legion as they're going to crawl into the snake. I already have, I think, Krill Peridney at that pin. That's a creative look, and it's working out for him. They're shutting down the snake side. Yeah. He's tucked in there tight. And they also have a, a decent amount of penetration on that D side as well as they've gotten all the way into D3. And there, go, there goes uh, Karzlev past the 50. Infamous drops a D player, Matty. Well, this is that question we just talked about. I can't, how much defense can you play on this field? Here goes a yellow. Oh, this might, this could help out Infamous. Minor penalty assessed as Krill Pretty coming off. It's going to pull out Sergey as well, too. Red Legion now all the way into Infamous' side of the field on the real side, though, Matty. Oh, they lose him. He overplays that position. Back center, I think it's Kali Rudolph catches him. Might be down to a one on two now. Infamous with, I think, Nate Schrader in the Drito corner. Kali Rudolph in the back center. And Red Legion going forward on the snake side. Ooh, Cali Rudolph. I'm not sure if that's Cal. That's Thomas. That's Thomas. Thomas. Thomas Taylor comes yep. through. A beautiful move here from the veteran Thomas Taylor as he runs down. Still got Player some wheels. Player for Legion in the snake. He does still have some wheels. And with Nate Schrader also still alive, that penalty just an absolute dagger to the heart here in this point in this very close match. Yeah, that was a little bit of a mental error there. Great job, though, to stay composed out there from Thomas Taylor and Nate Schrader. So it looks like with Thomas taking some heat, he's going to let Nate... I mean, everyone on Infamous was taking some heat as they were down bodies there for a little bit and in really tough spots, but they, you know, they took full advantage of that penalty. Beautiful move there from Thomas Taylor. Yep. And some very intelligent play from Nate Schrader there running off the field here on your screen. Now, what is Impact going to do to answer? You, when we went to the pits, you could hear him say, hey, here comes Axel. So they know that Axel is going to get out there, down two, still some time to work with, but Impact is going to have to try to push down this field. So... Revo expecting Axel God in to risk it to get into the snake here, probably off the break. Well, the nice thing about Axel playing so aggressively that first point is you bring him back in now, and they obviously you've got to assume he's going to go far, right? So that might open up a big D side move for Impact because obviously the guns from Revo are going to be snake side. And the Red Legion has illustrated that you can go all the way to the other team's Dorito basically on the break. Split screen breakout, Impact on the red side. Super on the blue side. breakout from Impact, Matty. Three in the back center. Didn't go outside on either tape. Lose their first attack or D side. Four and five advantage for Revo as they spread the field. Yeah, Zach Yakimek taking the walk from that D side. And then they're going to delay in the snake with Laval. Five on four situation. And a solid play call from Revo to take the risk to send that body up into the 50 brick in the middle of the field. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't even know the snake is hot. It, it's, that brick is kind of ineffective snake side. Yeah. There's a bounce shot that kind of pushes you off it. And if you don't see the guy go, then as soon as he crawls up, he just eats you alive. Well, so to kind of co-sign on what you're saying, you send a body, you risk a body all the way up there. That is a shootable position, yeah. depending on how low you run. But And he he's looking snake side, not able to keep Laval a snake. Laval's about to get a free kill. But does Laval know he's there? Laval does now. One, one shot. That was him. smart. Just one balled him. Axel gets shot at the same time, though. Oh, Nick, Nick, is, Nick gets another one. It's feasting right now. Nick Laval gets a little two pack here. Looking for another free kill. Cross kill gets, gets a three, three pack. Revo down to just two players left alive against, uh, off of Nick Laval's. Nick Laval's getting bounced in the back now from the uh, Dorito player. Oh, he just got shot on the bounce shot. 
Nick Laval getting pinched out from that bounce shot as Velez runs into a stream, though. So, I mean, I I'll that take was, that trade. I think that was Omar shooting that bounce shot. Yeah, it was 100% Omar. That was, that's, hey, intelligent heads-up play from Omar. Chaos set in. He sees his body starting to drop around him. Hey, where's Nick Laval? Finds out where he is. Knew the bounce shot immediately. And after shooting maybe about... 30, 40 paintballs off that bounce shot, got one to break on him. Um, so Velez actually didn't even need to make that move. No, because Omar ended up shooting Velez. Not, it's unfortunately for Omar, Omar and good here for impact. It's not going to matter, though, as the damage has already been done. Nick Laval going up and get a three pack, and it looks like Brandon Cornell going to clear things out on that D side. So just so that I understand this, man, because obviously my head bounces around a lot. What happens when a player gets into the snake and no one knows he's in there, and that guy goes to the 50 and wraps? And he shoots everybody? Oh, that's right. He shoots everybody. Okay. <laughs> so if you're playing out here, and uh, you probably want to make sure that you don't let the other team go into the snake unmolested. But that's why I'm kind of a little, I'm, I'm puzzled slightly, because Revo sends a body up to the brick, and... Out of position. Couldn't see it. He's in that spot. He's looking snake side. Yeah, I can't see it. But his, So his job is to shut down that side, but he can't see it. So I just, yeah, I mean, if, if you're... If your intent is to keep the body out of snake, probably find That's another not spot. spot, right? Yeah. That's not if he goes to that little brick behind it, Maddie, you can't really see, stop him from going into snake, but you definitely see him slide across the yeah. gap, and you're like, hey, snake's hot, guys. And knowing that because that, it is a forest of bunkers, and the guy can <laughs> pop up from lots of different spots and give you looks that you may think there's even more than one body in there, it's kind of crucial to know if there's a body in the snake. Sure enough, they don't, and he goes up. Uh, Nick Laval goes up there and gets a three-pack. Best move that we've seen out there so far, even though it did not work out for him. Or, sorry, it did work out for him. Um, and then how, now jumping into this next one here is down by one with five minutes and 40 seconds left to go. Legion, see what they do. They send body up to that brick as well, too. Try to shut down the snake side. Now he just talked about this. Yeah, if he was looking the other way, he would have just caught uh, Nate on his fill out to the drill because you can lock down the drill side from that center brick. First, first two days of practice, we really played a lot. Playing, yeah, that you now gets eliminated from the back. We tried, we tried that center brick snake side a lot. It just never worked. Well, Kuzman gets into the snake. He's been the go-to guy uh, for Legion so far here at this event, and we're probably going to be seeing a steady dose of him to try to carry the attack in the snake. And with no smoke trough here, heavy shoe or big shoes to fill. Yeah. Four, uh, three on five advantage for Infamous. Malloy hasn't done much so far in this match, Matty. He needs to he needs to clock in here and get get into the game. He's gotten dinked out a couple points. Well, it's been up to uh, Nate Schrader to carry the, I think that's Schrader over there on the D side in this spot right now. Legion or drops silver. another body mat. Down to just two against five Infamous players. Great communication here from Infamous. They go with a relatively conservative play, just risking that yep. one body attacking on the D side, and they're just winning some gunfights right now. And now it's just Sergey Malloy in both corners. Not in a position to do anything. This is a big game for Infamous. Yeah, Legion hasn't had great performances out here. They've yet to make a Sunday in 2023, but you're still dealing with four of the best players that are that exist. Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen much out of them now. I'm sorry, this year. But still, if Infamous come out, win this game against Legion, I mean, that's a it's big hard. confidence boost. And now they're going to get a concession as Legion is going to concede the point to preserve the time with four minutes and 12 seconds left to go. And so it was Silberg this time. So I like that back and forth here. It's been a little bit more Nate to start out, but I mean, the big question is with you know, no patient, no jam rows, who's going to be the first? Who, 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 it looks like Bruss Russell back in the snake. Yeah. How is he going to do? Which and then between Silberg and uh, Nate over there on the D side, who's going to step up? Yeah, for, for me, I like the fact that there, it, that forces him to step up, right? It forces him to start playing that snake position instead of the second or third guy. Because I think he produces so much better out of the one position than he does the, the two or the three. Well, with Silberg, who made his name for himself on Columbus level, deciding to, you know, to leave the Colt over there, as they'd say, uh, and move over to Infamous. You're saying de deciding to be a traitor? Is that what you said? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but big opportunity for him now. And then same with Nate. Two cu couple years, two, three years of dealing with shoulder injuries. He's had some really good looks out here so far. Jumping back into this next one here. Impact still down by one. 5.45 left to go, and it's a five-on-five five break. Impact takes Snake Corner and the Baby Drito, Matty. So they get two outside the pocket instead of keeping all guys inside the pocket. I think that's a good call. Yeah, a little more up the field in the middle for Revo and a little bit more outside and wide for Impact. But both teams still at full strength. Now here goes Impact getting body into the Snake. Nice feel from that corner. It's Zupa again. So they're going between Zupa, who was the MVP California last year, helping carry the team to victory. And he's getting the spin here. Crawls right into Snake 2. They also launch outside wide with Justin Cornell on the D side. And Cortez. looks like uh, going to be body dropping right now for Revo from that D side, Rich. Cilo Cortez taking the walk early. He's going to put uh, Revo in a tough spot here. 
They've got one back center. Bandicaro goes from the back center into the Dorito over there. They got the center cube, the snake side can, and the snake side insert. Bandicaro's getting a check. Looks like he's Looks gonna like he's get pulled out. Dead, yeah, but no penalty. Good. So three on five advantage as Nick Laval goes from back center into the snake one. Oh, no, no. it catches the uh, player there in the spot can. Yeah, Impact winning some gunfights, looking pretty good, trying to tie this one up. Yeah, and, and Revo just made it easy for him by going to the wrong spots and kind of doing the wrong stuff. Yeah, Impact, I don't know, Bruce controlling this one. I mean, yeah. no one's even feeling any pressure. Just trying to find these last couple bodies. Jackson moves up to the 50 brick in the middle. And again, you can play defense from this field, but it's really hard to play defense from the pocket, right? You got to get some penetration. You don't have to do it early, but you got to do it at some point. Two on, five advantage here as the Rebel guys try to figure out where the last two bodies are. Impact makes a big move D side, kills the last two. Yeah, a couple moves from Omar and Salcedo to try to make something happen for Rebel low on bodies, but Impact just beautiful control and containment. Cornell, Brandon Cornell running in to hit that buzzer, and that was a masterful point from Impact to tie the game up. Control, with a control, little, control. A little rich under four minutes to go. So yeah. maybe two more points we might see with the pace that's going out here. We're in the pits with Ebbetson Impact. Always an interesting question with Impact and so many all-stars on that team. Who's Dave going to go with? There's Big Dave Baines. Such a good job coaching the team to win. Lots of wins over the years, trying to get back to that top spot. He's also had to deal with some roster madness himself. And in a close battle with Baltimore Rebel here currently. Another close fight, but not as close. Two-point lead here for Infamous. Possible for Legion. Can they stay alive? Can they get up the field? We're doing a pretty good job of getting up the field for the most part. But. Big bite on the D side for the Red Legion, Maddie. All the way to Dr Dorito 3. Infamous drops their first player. And Joe Barrett. Barrett taking the early walk. We haven't really seen Barrett die early much this year. And there goes a big fill outside wide as they're going to be losing oh, another body in the snake. Oh, oh, bodies are flying wow. off the fill right now here for Infamous. That's the, you, probably the fastest point. That, buddy. I've got nothing to say. <laughs> well, I mean, it was uh, <laughs> the initial break looked pretty good, but they just started walking out. After Parslev that. blows open the D side. I think that's where most of the deaths came from. Were from that D side, uh, but that's I think that's the fastest point that we've seen out here so far that did not include a penalty. So beautiful job by. Uh, by Karzlev on that D side to pull a little bit closer here and make this a little bit more interesting. Infamous still with the lead, but that's a frustrating point loss. Gonna have to shake it off in the pits with Legion, big Sergey. I don't know what Dynasty is playing, their new camera guy, but they should be doing this one. <laughs> so, that's uh, number 33, Kuzmin, the, you do a translate the snake player. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't speak a lick of Russian. Just, he was saying, good point, do that again, guys, do that again. <laughs> so, coming off early right now as Rebel tries to take ground, Caleb Abel, snake side. Oh, they're going to be losing Omara as well, too, so it's just Velez here on the snake side in this tie game with three minutes and 45 seconds left to go. Edmonton impact. Revo shoots one and takes real estate on the D side, Matty. Ooh, but it looks like on that shoots D side, another. yeah, Revo getting a couple kills here, trying to even this one up as Laval taking the walk, JC taking the walk, and now they're on the attack on that uh, D side. Too much. Gonna try to launch and did he get another one? He did as uh, Brandon Cornell's coming off too. They're not looking snake side. No one's looking snake side so far with these bodies coming off right now for Infamous. They don't have a body in the snake. Yeah, Impact's got two left, back center oh, and snake insert. They, Revo loses their body, though, so now it's a two-on-one, Maddie. I'll tell you what, they were looking snake side. The second they flip a gun over, though, Velez loses that gunfight. Yeah. So that's a tough death there yeah. for Velez. He was in an absolute fortress. If he could have pressured earlier when they were pushing down that D side, no guns were on him, they would it would have been a much different outcome, but he just didn't get the information he needed to make that read. I mean, I like the aggression there, but, man, he was in a really good spot with three minutes left to work with. Yeah. No one was looking at him, just lost that first gunfight, and now Impact trying to turn the tables yeah and we saw that a lot in practice matt with the field will kind of turn you know everyone's living on the sides of their bunkers because you've blown through the snake and they've blown through the drito or you've blown through the drito and they've blown through the snake yeah i think with that chaos might be down to a two-on-one in two favor on one. of impact yeah revo with one player in the d 
three impact with one player, Nick uh, Zupa, wrapping the 50 snake, and one over there on the D side somewhere. Zupa finds the Revo player, his former teammate. <clears throat> Catches him going forward. Yes. Impact going up by one. Great job by Impact to absorb the blows, tuck in, figure out where those bodies are, and then win a couple gunfights. Yeah. And those, that's a point that Rebel's going to want back. <clears throat> I mean, it's just tough, right? You're Velez, you're in a four. Like, that 50 spot is massive. You have three minutes left. You have outside contained. And tie then game. Tie game. Against Impact, one of the best teams in the world. Uh, you know, but he's playing, he played on Impact last yeah, year. Yeah. This is his first event with the squad. He wants to feast out there. So I understand the intention. I love how he got in there. But that's that moment you want to take a big, deep breath, figure out what's in front of you, uh, and then not lose that gunfight. Execute, execute. Joe Baird getting out there a little late for Infamous. So Legion making this one interesting here. Not a ton of time left on the clock. As uh, three minutes and 45 seconds left. It's definitely enough for a couple more points, though. As, Legion drops one. Yeah, first strike is Infamous shooting the body from the D side. Karzlev, and at this point, with the way Karzlev is playing on the D side, that's a huge kill. Thomas Taylor also taking the walk there after the first initial gunfights. Four on four, Matty. Couple secondaries, couple secondaries here for Legion as their first to go. They move up to get to the wedge on the D side and all now also gonna crawl into the snake. Infamous locking it up. Oh, Sergey taking the walk, Maddie. Infamous is locking it up. Two snake side defensive spots, two Dorito defensive spots as Brusselback gets into the snake for Infamous. Yeah, I feel like Infamous is out gunfighting Legion. Legion's just making a little bit better moves occasionally to keep relevant in yeah. this game. But Infamous is very, looking pretty good here, man. Pretty dialed in as far as, I'm, this game's not over yet. Yeah. But I like the gunfighting we're seeing out of Infamous yeah. early. They had the one point where everybody basically walked off at the same time. That was a little sloppy, but all the other breakouts seemed pretty well. Seemed pretty good. Seems guys are like in control, communicating. Well, it seemed, they're playing a tough team, man. I know, again, I know the results don't, this year, again, we talked about this, but if you just joined us, Legion struggling this season, but the four guys they have on their roster, other than their snake attacker, those are all stars. Yeah. So if, 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 as it stands right now, Infamous is out gunfighting those guys. And it looks like they know the field pretty well, too. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Infamous seems like they understand how to play this field a little bit better than the Red Legion. Yeah. Well, Russell back in a good position here in the Snake, but I was just going to say, unfortunately, Legion was in a little bit better field position, but then they'd step up and win another gunfight and see Kuzman walking off, eyes of the sky in frustration. Yeah, he just stayed on that trigger a little bit long. Got to try to make that shot and disappear because the longer you stay there, the more chance someone's going to get you. And look at that. They didn't get antsy. They get the kill. Russell back calls the, uh, the kill cross field. They get the communication. No one's in a hurry to go anywhere. They got a one point lead. Uh, they just got a crucial kill. They weren't in a hurry and they forced the concession. Just perfect textbook paintball in that last point here for, uh, for Infamous, other than the death of Thomas. Good to see Brett Messer getting some spins, working he hard on his game past event. couple years. Yeah, he earned that last event. He's also getting jacked, too. <laughs> Messer yeah. is not missing any days of the gym. Definitely want to drink whatever he's drinking. The water must be really amazing around there. Good talk. Lots of good talks there in the yeah. Infamous pit, trying to figure out what they're going to do the next point. It's Travis Szymanski, leader of the crew. Okay, Brett, Thomas, Sam, Joe, Tim. So Sam's going to get a spin here, Tim. Tim does look like the go-to guy on the snake side. Looks like they're going back and forth between Nate and Sam. Yep. Uh, over there on the D side. Impact going 2 1 2. That means one shooter in the back center. Revo goes two back center. Neither team. Oh, I'm sorry. Revo drops two on the break. Only. 
Two minutes left to go, two minutes, six yeah. seconds. As, yeah, those two bodies coming off. That's huge for impact. Yeah. Edmonton impact with five eyes live, looking at a, a real big high body situation. And with a lead, I mean, that it should be the coffin the nail here, yeah. right? Unless Revo uh, is smart, concedes this point, gives himself enough time to come back and win two. Or if impact makes some huge mistake, major gets penalty, a, major yeah, yeah, which you know, the quality of players on level or on uh, impact, probably not going to see that. But that's what Revo's hoping for right now. And if you're, honestly, though, if you're Revo and you're three bodies and your coach is not going to concede, you kind of have the pressures off right now. Yeah, yeah, you're down by one and you're in a low body situation, but your coach is expecting you to start moving up the field to try to produce. Yeah, and also Revo kind of played right into Impact's hands there. Impact being up by a point, went kind of with a heavy shooter line, got two kills in the break. Revo tried to get outside the pocket, so they lost two bodies. And now you put yourself in a position where you have to play against a team that's as good or better than you down by two bodies, down by a point, and now you've either got to concede the point and try to come out and win two, or somehow battle back against a five on three advantage. Which... Margin is crucial though, so I mean, just keeping it, to try to, if you could pop, oh, penalty. Amar gets another penalty. Minor penalty, that's definitely gonna do it here for this point, but I do not still see a concession, so maybe trying to hope that they can keep it to a, you know, that the time would expire before Impact scores a point to keep the margin at one. Probably yeah, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen in five on one. Yeah, again, still not conceding the point. So it looks like Revo is going to just accept this probably two-point loss. Yeah, Fuzzy's going to go hit that buzz. And I'm wondering if if uh, Jackson is just going to hit the buzzer so they get another point. Yeah, it looks like he is. Impact. Initially, they scored the first point, right? Revo goes on a little bit of run three and answered for them, and then Impact steps back up, and then it's all been Impact in the second half of the match. So... Like what we're seeing that impact early here, they faced adversity and they answered that adversity very nicely. Well, and I like the fact that they've won with offensive points and they won with defensive points, right? Because that's kind of been a problem for them in the past where they have no problem crossing it up, getting up on bodies and then, you know, winning the point. But when they had to go, they never did. And plus back making those big moves early on in that match made a big difference. Red Legion's basically in 5D mode. Yeah, Legion down by two. Yeah, infamous on cruise control here, kind of. Yeah. Legion's gonna, we're gonna, about to see staggered attack, full court press here. A little bit of a Rough little start. bit of a bad start, but not that bad. They oh, they lose Alexander Burdenkoff though, and infamous, infamous, so infamous wrist out body with Thomas Taylor up to the center brick, just in case. No, it's good to send a body up to deal with the attackers if they are going to be flying down the field at you, but it doesn't look like uh, Legion committed to a big staggered attack, even needing to with just two minutes left to go, wanting a traditional point, though. It does look like Thomas Taylor going to be taking the walk. Another body comes off for Legion. It's Karzlev, so Karzlev and Malloy. Yeah, three on four advantage here for Infamous. Brussbeck's trying to find out where the Red Legion player is in the snake. He releases to go get him, but does not know where he's at. Yeah, Kuzman's still in there, but... Russell back still alive as well, too, and then he's going to go through to it's get beautiful. that kill. Red Legion down to two, Matt. You know, do like what we've been seeing out of Russell back here in the snake. Yeah. Big question was who was going to be playing the one on the snake side. I love this combo of Joe Barrett and uh, Tim Russell back here for Infamous. So Legion is going to concede. It's going to send the margin to three points now, but yeah, they're the man on your screen. I mean, Russell back's been around the league a bit, you know, and spent some time on, uh, on Impact. Didn't really get a ton of playing time there. Uh, cut his team DMG, but, you know, always a highly talented prospect that we're just kind of waiting to, to emerge, and maybe this is his time. And Barrett is playing very consistent right behind him. I love what we're seeing out of Infamous in the gunfights. They look, again, they know the field. They're winning gunfights. They're playing composed. That's a good little one, too, over there. They don't seem to be getting rattled in the chaotic moments either. So, you know, Infamous is continuing to look pretty good, trying to improve upon the third place that we saw out of them. Again, just barely losing to Houston Heat. They beat Impact in the quarterfinals in a one-point match at the last event in Texas. And then they barely lose to Houston Heat in a very low-scoring game, 1-2. to two. Look like they're going to get a win against Legion here in this one. The question is, what's the score going to be? Jumping into this one right now, the two-point lead, similar situation with just 25 seconds left to go, Rich. It's going to be an Impact win. Yeah. And again, Revo fed a couple a body over there on the D side on the break. I mean, obviously, they kind of had to go if they wanted to try to win two points, but... Caleb Ayla at the 50-yard line here for Revo. A little unrealistic. But just 12 seconds to try to stack up. 
Uh, one more point. Caleb is going to launch. Uh, Caleb's killing everybody. Caleb is shooting a lot of bodies right now, but unfortunately for Caleb yeah, and he Revo, is he's not going to have enough time. So beautiful job by Caleb Abel to stack up what looked like a two or a three pack here. Yeah, and you can pack. see the frustration. He needs to do that a little earlier in the match, Matt. Yeah. A little too little. Great job after it was too late. But yeah. before it was too late, would have been a great time to do that. Still, though, not a bad look for Revo. No, not at all. Playing one of the best teams in the league as Impact currently sitting at fifth place. And a really good look for, for Impact. Kind of control there, like I said, and, and being able to win on offense and defense is huge out here because most of these teams are going to kind of go one way or the other. Yeah, Revo went one and three at the last event, did beat Diesel. They lost the Legion, the Hurricanes, and Damage. In, you know, no blowouts, though, for Revo at the last event. Long tournament, boys. Let's go. Yeah, that definitely needs to be said at this point. They have three more games. If they win the next three, they will be in. Uh, Revo's in a bracket with Extreme, Impact, Aftermath, and the Saints. Bracket Probably the hardest e. bracket in the out of all of them. I disagree, but that's all right. Red Legion drops their first body G-side, Maddie. They get up to the center brick. Infamous with five guys kind of across the back. Locking those positions down. Red Legion now on Infamous' side of the field. Getting their first elimination on that center player in the tower. Infamous now dropping Russell back from the... Uh, Snake insert, doesn't draw the penalty this time. Yeah, another body coming off for Legion. Sergey Solnysko taking the walk, Creel Prindy taking the walk as well, two from that middle spot. And Malloy's going over there to try to stem the tides, but it's a little too little, a little too late. I would have liked to have seen him got into this game a little earlier, Matt, in more of an offensive way. You know, like, it's tough to pull off uh, one on threes and stuff on this field just because the vision's not that good. You just don't know where the bodies are. Two on four advantage here from Infamous. Misses with no rush on finishing out this point, just shooting their guns, trying to burn up some clock. Yeah, they already have a three-point lead. That's a great margin. Yeah, and in Red this Legion situation. doesn't want to concede it and, and you know worsen their margin, so they're just shooting their guns. Although Infamous is on the Red Legion side of the field now, getting another elimination. Yeah, down to just 10 seconds. Here comes Barrett's going to launch and to try to put one more point on the board. If he hits the afterburners, he might be able to do it. No. There's yeah, that one body left yeah, alive at the tower. Corner. Yeah, that corner was still with, alive. Yeah, Bertnikoff there. out there. So not able to stack up that extra point to take the margin to four. Great win from Infamous. They, you know, sometimes Infamous likes to get off to a little, no, not likes to, but does get off they to a little love bit to of, get of a, off to a slow, slow start. start. And that was not a slow start. They already look pretty dialed. Uh, they're in a bracket with X Factor, AC Diesel, Legion, and Uprising. So depending on how good Uprising here is as this event and Diesel, that could be a pretty nasty bracket, maybe the bracket of death. It was fun watching Mouse play the snake yesterday. I hope it's fun watching him play the snake today. Yeah, so first set is in the books. Congratulations to Infamous and Impact as they take the victory. You can see Diesel, AC Diesel. Big question is, what, what are we going to see out of AC Diesel? A 12th and a 13th place with the all-star lineup that they have. They brought in Mike, Big Mike Kim, and there he is to help coach this team and try to take them to victory. See if they can do it first game's gonna be against Uprising also in this set. Uh, Aftermath with a new roster looked outstanding at the last event and they're gonna be playing the Latin Saints. That's coming up next here. 2023 NXL, Mid-Atlantic Major, Matty Marshall here on Go Sports. See you in just a few. I think that this is gonna be a layout that's going to benefit anybody that's naturally aggressive. To have that practice where we have aggressive teams meet us in the center, it's a bloodbath. And it's preparing us for the war that we're about to go into. And I know that they're being prepared for the war that they're about to go into. Given, you know, that this is our first year uh, in the professional division, uh, we're, we're sitting lower than we'd like. You know, the last event, Lone Star Major, we had a rough one. We were fighting. We definitely fought nonstop and we were punching up and we were fighting some bigger guys at the time. And our, unfortunately, our score showed it. We went 0-4 at the event. Uh, but that gave us a great bottom to go from. Um, you know, the only way to go when you're hitting rock bottom is up. And it was humbling. It's gonna be a firefight. You know, and uh, everybody's locked, loaded, and ready to go. Hey, this is Walker with Carbon Paintball here to talk to you about our SC custom jerseys. To start your team's design, head over to crbnpaintball.com fill in some team information, including what colors, what template you want to base your jersey off of, upload your main team logo and any sponsors, enter your name and your number, and we're gonna kick you back a 3D image of your jersey. The custom jersey is built on a five panel design that's all customizable. The jersey features a DWR coating all throughout the jersey, so it is water resistant. It also is stain proof, and it has side mesh venting. 
The jersey is also very fitted, so it has a compact neck collar, and it also features elastic thumb loops to keep the sleeves in place while you're sliding or running. To start your team design, head over to crbnpaintball.com. Battles on my field. Who you kidding around? All that hating still can't bring me down. Matter of fact, look how I'm living now. Can't give you figures, it's a big amount. Spanish woman with me sipping crown. I'm just here to have a look around. Get to work, I'm here to lift some pounds. I'm on another wave of different sounds. I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, a five and a horse, I'm ready for war I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything Now you be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk up their body Another one body, that's just how it go I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes Stay in your lane, I to stay on the go I can to play with the pros and act like a rookie So they overlook me, then I double up again, none of their nose None of them cold, they just got lucky but never adapted So I'm to the one if it's coming to blows My enemies cutting it close I let them think that they got me, but what do you know? I had them beat before we ever spoke, I'm ready for smoke I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, a five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws, to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. Now they ain't go harder than me, they need a blade and a sheath, a shank and a piece, a crate full of heat, an army of fleet, a tank and a jeep, a navy at sea, where they some marine, an ace up their sleeve, a team of marines, a freak on a leash, a beast with an appetite, razor for teeth, and still they will lay at my feet, boy you got the wrong one, I gotta look over all of my publishing statements for Q1 as soon as the song's done, I gotta call up my mama and tell her I made it as soon as my log's done, I gotta read all my trade publications and sit my tea till it is all done, I think it's all fun. I need, uh, I need everything, I need all of everything, yeah. you a simp, you ain't in my lane, you a lame, bitch get out my way, 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 the whack ass locals say the most, do the least okay, talk about on my back to my face in a people okay but that be outrageous admit you did the least okay step out to the nines my three piece ain't got a crease okay it's okay it's okay kill on them could peace okay i be damned if i just made my money over beats okay free to lay chips out on the table time to ante up damn it bruh you be liable to lose the phantom bruh She's okay, risk it off for what to lose, like it's okay, can't relate, always had your bets before you reach okay, I'm center stage, heavy risk, ever did, my investments aging like a pessimist, benefits, and you know that my resume is a heavy weight, yeah, put it on my back, give me everything, yeah, I need, uh, I need everything, I need all of everything, yeah. We got a ton of great announcements, a huge show, and all the news and all the stuff that's going on, possibly, allegedly. Lord. We are ripping right now. 
We got some sick giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> Missouri All-Stars have been playing together out of Kansas City for about going on five years. Our play style is super aggressive. We like to just be in your face constantly. We can just keep the gas going the whole time. D4 season, I had hit Walker up and was like, hey man, like, what's the situation with this carving gear? Uh, it looks awesome, I would like to get my guys in it. And it, from right then and there, D4 season, four years ago, he got us plugged in. We've been with him ever since. They are here at every event. They have gear that you can buy on hand. They have lenses on hand. If you have a tear in your knee pad, you need to swap that out. They'll have that for you. I've literally had Walker in my pit in Dallas asking me if I need help with pits. Like, you can't, you can't ask for anything more from a sponsor. Welcome back. 2023 NXL Mid-Atlantic Major. Coming up next, big story here. How is AC Diesel gonna do against Uprising? Diesel needs to make something happen here at this event. As two events in a row, we have not seen him here on Sunday. of have a superstar, all-star lineup, and, and they picked up Big Mike him in to help, him, uh, to help him come in and coach. Also in this set, Aftermath and the Saints. Great story with Aftermath at the last event. I'm Matty Marshall here with Rich Telford as we start point number one and also like to welcome Callie Rudolph, longtime veteran, all-star himself, into the booth here to call this game. Looks like Uprising gonna be the first to drop a body from that D side. They're gonna drop Graham Arnold as well too. They're gonna be losing Clint Johnson out of the snake though. Uh, AC Diesel is, so. Four on three advantage here for Diesel. Callie, how you doing bud? Doing well, great win for Infamous in that first set. So, gonna hear from Kelly Rudolph about the team, how they're looking. Another body coming off right now for Uprising, so the line getting whittled down. Four as, on two advantage here. Yeah, four on two advantage at, for AC Diesel as there comes Goldman into the snake. His partner in crime, Justin Rabikoff, as a move being made outside wide in desperation to try to stop the bleeding for Uprising. Player at the Aztec battling for his life. He's gonna get eaten up by Mouse. And they're just looking for that last crossfield kill here. And that should not be long in coming. There goes Goldman and the point concession. So first point going to go to AC Diesel. What a great start for them. And with Uprising, it's, man, we just never know which Uprising is going to show up. Are they going to be the team that looks styled and can beat top teams and make it to a Sunday? It's we been have a no while idea. since that team has showed up, to be fair, right? Like, that's always been the kind of story. One event, they're on fire. Next event, they're struggling. They're 3-1, and one, they're 1-3. and three. But it's been a little bit of time before we had that 
that won that 3-1 team, right? And so, Callie, congratulations on that victory. Thank you. You look good. And the question was, with no Jonah Jamrose and no Zach Patient, mm -hmm. Tim Brussel back in a slot into that first attacker on the snake side. You got Nate Schrader coming after, coming back after years of, uh, of shoulder injuries. And then Sam Silberg, new guy on the team, coming over from level. Mm -hmm. How were they going to do? They did great. Now, we know that you guys are going to do you know, the twos and the threes. We've seen you play for years. We know what you're capable of. You know Thomas Taylor, those type of guys. So, but man, slap yeah. on the back. Thank you. A great Appreciate one. that. Yeah, we really needed to get that first win. So jumping into this first point here with Aftermath, who looked very impressive, making it to this uh, to Sunday, going undefeated in the prelims at the last event, losing to X Factor by one. We'll see if they can summon the same spirit here yet again. It looks like going into the snake here, Latin Saints also need to make something happen here, in, as they're sitting in last place. And they do not want to get relegated. They fought that battle last year, and they're going to be fighting it again this year. They do dive a body here, set into the snake. Yeah, Aftermath gets to the 50 snake first, Matt. Five on five. And, yeah, and the, I was going to say, the guy in the can is not playing like that snake is hot. Oh, he's going to pay for And the for snake it. one shoots the 50 snake, actually trades. Kelly, as we're seeing this develop with Aftermath taking over control on the offense, talk to me about this snake side a little bit. Um, you know, you can get down the field, get to these 50 spots, um, wrap around, and you have lots of kills. You're definitely rewarded if you get down the field. Um, you can make the snake on the break. You can also uh, shoot the snake on the break. So there's a lot of different variables, and you know that makes the field fun. Uh, you have different different breaks out. It's not going to be the same thing over and over again. And you're going to see guys getting aggressive and getting creative in there. It was a very fun snake to watch. I know we're only one set in, mm -hmm. but even with the practices yesterday, it, it's a little bit of a battleground if both guys make it alive. Yep. And if they don't, and you make it in there, and your opponent doesn't, and you know where they are, man, you can score some mm -hmm. quick points from the snake side. So, mm -hmm. there, like you said, a lot of variables here. Oh my God, the player for the Saints who just got shot mm -hmm. is getting completely chicken wings stitched oh, up. Extra bonus here. balls for everyone here as Aftermath is just blazing down the field. And that is just an excellent first point here for Aftermath as they're going to get on the board and looked pretty stellar Yeah. here in, in point number one. Yeah, a lot of not, not a lot of mistakes in that point. They look pretty confident. They know exactly what they're doing. Wrapping around, taking over the snake side here. Yeah, and the only thing I would say to the Saints is, because they had a guy in the snake, mm -hmm. instead of waiting for that guy to kill another guy and then trade with that guy, go trade with that guy earlier before right, somebody, right. right? Yeah, he kind of went on defense right yeah. away. Sometimes that works, but... Uh, you, you don't want to trade with the guy and then leave your whole snake side empty. Yeah, and you don't want to be in a position where he can shoot a couple guys before you got your shot on him, right? Like yeah. if he's if you're so far inside that you can't keep him from wrapping and killing the snake, it's or killing the home, killing the can. I, I personally, I mean, yes, the snake guy shouldn't have died, but the guy in the can can't die from the. You've got to play like that spot like all the time. Kind of the right? cardinal sin of this field for that bunker yeah. you cannot die by that i heard everybody on every team telling everybody like listen you always play like that's hot don't yeah. ever get shot from that mm -hmm. and then after the point bro the snake 50 shot me mm -hmm. wrapped it around <laughs> blew me apart point number two here ac diesel up by one big bite on the d side for diesel yeah, running and shooting bite. all the way to that d3 over there maddie they yeah they two kills well they doubled up the back center see if they can get johnson mark johnson out of that doubled up a j-rab does produce two kills though so mission accomplished now Gonna have to make it their way up the field. Yeah, five on three advantage here for Diesel. So Uprising is locking off the Dorito side now with their two snake players. Yeah. But it's only a matter of time here until they get anywhere down the snake. Well, they're trying to lock down that D side. They did allow the player to make the move across and get into D3. Also, body gets shot and a minor penalty assessed. That's gonna be a quick concession here for Uprising and AC. Well, Diesel seems to feel, fix those little problems that they were having. As of now, yes. <laughs> yeah, <still got> some <laughs> Looking good. Tournament to go here. You know, you bring in a little bit of a Mike Hinge that goes a long way. So no yeah. one wants to get yelled at by Mike Hinge. They got it wrapped I up. Do. We should I just all it. head home, right? I will take it just because it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Callie. It's all wrapped up. Yeah, it's, it's all, all wrapped, wrapped up. up. It's done. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. Yep. Yeah, I'm also wondering with the wealth of players they have on that team, who are going to be getting the spins, right? Because mm -hmm. they were th they're throwing spins out to mm -hmm. a lot of different bodies, um, only going one and three at both of the first two events. So I'm just wondering, is Heeman going to tighten that roster up a little bit? Is he just going to kind of try to condense it to his feel as his maybe five, six, seven best guys are? I mean, Callie, you've been on teams yeah. with stacked rosters, and I know you guys are dealing with some injuries, but that's always a conversation. I do think that because you, you can run far both sides of the field, you're going to have guys getting kind of tired. Mm -hmm. um, and there can be quick points as well. So you might, might have to go you know, to line two or a, a hybrid line and throw some other runners in there. Well, Morris getting into a good spot here. Actually, both teams, oh. Saints and uh, Aftermath, both in good spots. But Saints losing a body on that D side, losing another one from the back center. It's going to take a lot of pressure here off Aftermath as Aftermath sitting in a five-on-three situation currently. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and we have two snake players right, right next to each other. Snake. Yeah, battle going down to the snake, but another penalty assessed here on the Saints, oh. and it's just going to be this just body and the snake. Oh, Poor boy. guy. Yep. Yeah, um, Mor Morris does not go get know. Yeah, go get him. Just go get him. Well, okay. he comes through and trades out with Morris. Yeah. Best he could hope for. But that is going to do it. Cough and nail. Grayson Gladstone's just waving everybody off. Yeah, aftermath winning that point, four bodies. I, I will say the Saints, like, they, they start getting penalties like crazy, and that's what really hurts them a lot. You know what I mean? Even if they have a, a nice, solid game plan, it's not going to help if, if half your team's dying on the break because someone played on. Yeah. That, and they seem like they play a lot of roster roulette. Like, there seems like mm -hmm. different guys on squad all the time. Well, I'm looking at the roster right now, and they don't have anyone that's actually ranked pro on the team. Wow. It's all D1 players, mostly D1, uh, a D3 player and a D2 player. Some of these names we've seen before. I mean, Evan Manners was a, a pro years ago. Um, we've seen Kerrigan. Kerrigan's played some good good paintball uh, overseas and here. So, I mean, they, you know, they're trying. It's just need a little more firepower, need a little tighter. Definitely, Cali, stop getting penalties. Yeah, it's got to be disciplined. I mean, no matter what you do, you just cannot get penalties. Uh, we actually got, I think, maybe one or two penalties in yeah. our match. And, yeah. and, you know, we could have won those points. Instead, you know, yeah, now all of a sudden it's a two-on-two two instead of a five-on-two. five on two, So. Yeah, well, even though you guys did make a few mistakes here and there, it was a pretty good game for you guys. I'm glad it looked like that up here because we were, we were pretty frustrated. You know, we have really high standards for what we've been working on all week and getting ready and... We're definitely hard on each other, but we'll take the win for sure. That makes you guys better, right? Yes, Harder you are on yourself, the better it is. Well, yep, and yep. also, up here it looked good. Infamous historically does like to get off to some slow starts, yeah. mm -hmm. and that was not a slow start. So no, that's no, definitely not. But yeah, it's good that like you guys are tweaking there. this. Yes, because there was definitely some yeah. mistakes out there. It wasn't a fumble-free game. Right. Yeah, we we really harp on the don't start slow. Uprising is really struggling here. It looks like they go pocket, risking one to the snake corner, but lose him. Oh, yep. Now lose their second oh, player attacking. So Uprising has played guns. every point against Diesel, three against five. And you're not going to beat Diesel three against five. Yeah, J-Rab just gliding into the snake after shooting one of those bodies on the break from that back center. He's going to go right to the pass of 50 here. And three bodies pocketed up, left alive for Uprising. Yeah, I like, I like that release right to their side. Axel did the same thing. I like that release. It's about to be it. Yeah. Diesel with two bodies in the snake quickly and not allowing Uprising time to adjust. Looks like Graham Arnold's just getting, I mean, pushed around in that spot bunker. Yeah, he's he's catching so much pressure, he just has to hide. He's really yeah. no choice right now. As soon as he gets pressure from the D side, he's going to die, Matty. He's only able to live right now because he's not getting pressure D side. And they let the back center fill out over to the, yeah. uh, the Dorito. This point should have been over, right? If they had had a containment, this point would have been over. Well, J-Rob gets that cross field kill. And now it's down to two bodies here for Uprising. But yeah, it's been all, C, all AC. Yeah, they could have dropped the hammer sooner, but I don't think they need to. And they're just kind of rolling their guns, yeah. closing smart. But they still should have that containment, right? Right, Even right. Even if you're not dropping the hammer, you got to at least have the fundamentals. Five on two situation in favor of AC currently right now. Looks like Nico Hyde and Mark Johnson on the D side. And then I think we're going to see a steady dose of Clint Johnson, Mouse, and J-Rab here on the snake side. Yeah, that's a very powerful three-man combination over there. J-Rab goes up, sneaks yep. cross kill, gets to California, gets the kill on this side, gets That's another kill. Beautiful little clean textbook, mm -hmm. two-pack close from J-Rab, waves everybody off, and that was a perfect point for uh, for AC Diesel. Mm -hmm. No one dies, five bodies alive. It feels like they're putting a lot less pressure on themselves and just kind of going out and playing paintball, where before they mm -hmm. were like f trying to force themselves to play every point perfectly and not make any mistakes and criticize each other, you know? Mm -hmm. seems like now they're just playing paintball and it, it seems like it's working out a little bit better. Well, it's, it's tough, right? And maybe, Kelly, you could speak to this because I know you just talked about how you put a lot of pressure on yourselves to play that perfect mm -hmm. paintball, but there has to be a little freedom of creativity within the framework of the variables that are going on in the field mm -hmm. for you to be able to make these big moves against these best teams to be the best team. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, we spend days and days and hours talking about paintball, and then we get to this point, you know, and, and if a guy makes it through a gap or, you know, you might not be looking the right way, and there's just little things that you can always tighten up as a group that's just team ball and, and not just your one-on-one -on -one battle with the guy in front of you. So if you're, you know, connecting as a full unit, it's going to only help that much more. Especially on this field, you got to have guys looking at all the right spots or else they'll just fly right down like J-Rab ended up in the snake right away because they shoot two guys on the break. But, um, yeah, we, we definitely all hold each other accountable. Um, you know, we also point things out to each other in a, in a positive way. You know, sometimes it gets negative, but you tighten it back up and, 
realize you're a team. So, Yeah, it's kind of tough because the way that you have constructive criticism mm -hmm. within the framework mm -hmm. of the hierarchy yes. of the team, mm -hmm. that's kind of the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the top teams, they're constantly having some sort mm -hmm. of critical discussion right. that has to exist yep. or you can't fix anything. But how you go about that and also how you receive those those messages, yeah. those critical messages, when you were the one that made the mistake, right. you know, the rece reception of it and the giving of the criticism at this level is kind of a precarious it conversation. Is, yeah, it's, and it's different for every single person you talk to. Yeah. Um, everybody, you know, reacts and ticks different. So uh, maybe they're they're finally starting to figure out what that what that recipe looks like for them. Um, you know, there it's a it was a whole new team, mixing guys together, and some of those guys have been playing with the same people for a long time. So adding in new bodies could be a completely different change. Yeah, and then also changing things too. You know, is uh, saying goodbye to A Rod. Yes. And then bringing in Mike. Yep. So yeah, but again, we're just a few points in, but it's looking really good so far. Saints go snake on the break, Matt. So does Aftermath. Aftermath loses back center. Four yep. on five advantage for the Saints. Yeah, Castro into the snake for Aftermath. That's three separate bodies we've seen in the snake for Aftermath. They do drop that one early though. So four bodies on five currently within the advantage for the Saints. And this is when, this is a big point right now for the Saints. Right. Yeah, five on three, Matt. Yeah, you're down by two, you have a high body situation. These are the ones you cannot lose if you want to be a professional paintball team. Correct. The snake player shot the Dorito, uh, the little Dorito for Aftermath, and now he's looking to go get the guy right in he's front of him. He's going right into his gun. Oh, he, got, he gets Castro. I can't tell if he's still oh, alive. Oh, he got him alive. Surprised alive. him, wow. Huge. I should wrap around and shoot that center brick. Yeah. Yeah, not looking good here at all at this point for Aftermath. They dropped that first body, dropped another one quickly, get beaten the snake. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really seen the Saints play with five guys, aside from the very first breakout, so. Kerrigan backing up his front player nicely. They don't have much work to do. Last player gets a chicken wing coming off here, a couple extra bonus balls. Yeah, and I mean, it's... Well, that was due, because remember, they yeah. bonus balls mm -hmm. the Saints mm -hmm. in the first say, point. He's complaining, yep. but he started it. Yeah. So. It's like, hey, you dished it out. You can take a couple. We win a point. Right. Yeah. So it's fun to be bonus balling the other guys until you lose a point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Aftermath's up two, and there's still 11 minutes left in the game. So there's a whole lot that could change. Maybe that that, that point right there is what they needed to get a little fired up, the fire's up. going. Yeah. Get that Latino blood going. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So three-point lead right now for AC Diesel. Uprising, just zero answer currently so far. These points have gone relatively fast, though, mm -hmm. so Uprising does have a lot of time to mount a comeback. Well, again, Uprising's problem to me is they're playing every point three against five, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the first thing you have to start doing is stop losing those guys in the break, right? right. You're not going to beat Diesel three on five, right? Why not? You've proven it three points, right? So pocket up, don't risk the body that you're risking, yeah. then make your secondaries and try to give yourself at least a chance to play five on five. Diesel's hitting their shots on the break and see if Uprising can do the same. Stick it, stick it in going D side with, I believe, Hyde actually going up the middle. And yeah, a little conservative break to try to shoot a body again and they do it. So AC Diesel just absolutely demolishing people on the break so far through four points. Three on five, Diesel advantage. Um, they still have four. The, the Dorito player's getting checked. Oh, wow. Well, not Five anymore. on zero. I mean, upri on uprising. Major penalty. Yeah, no, just, that's the frustration penalty right there. Right on time. So, yep, they're not afraid to throw the flags today, that's for sure. Yeah, no, not at all. lots of penalties thrown in that first set. Well, it's like that's every sport, right? I mean, mm -hmm. whether it's baseball, football, paintball, whatever we're right. talking about, okay, well, referees are part of it. Right. Are they going to be harsh, a little more lenient? You know, some umpires have different strike zones. Right. Sometimes right. the, you know, more uh, in, in football. Is that holding penalty going to get called on a regular basis? Is it not? So far, the refs are not uh, scared They're to throw some around. flags. You have to watch those first matches, too, and, and like, hey, how's the flags yeah. going out there? They're yeah. throwing a lot of flags, right. all right? We'll tighten it up. Yep. Hey, man, they're not throwing flags on anything. We'll loosen it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's part of every sport. That's part of the yeah, game. Just gotta, that's just one, another one of the 1,000 reads you got to make. Yeah, you can either get mad about that, or you can just react right. to yep. what's happening yeah. and play accordingly. Use yep. it to your advantage, right? Yep. You just heard Diesel say, good shooting off the break. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're shooting really well in the break. Yeah, if I was it's, playing against Diesel right now, I think I'd go five back center. It's five back hey, center. Hey, paintball yes. gets a lot easier when you're playing five on four, oh five gosh. on three, every single point. Yes. I mean, look at all the look at the smiles. Everyone is just all just happy, smiles. Mm hmm In the pits with Diesel. You know what they're thinking? They're thinking exactly what you said. We did it. Yeah. We, we figured did it, guys. out. We're winning this We're, event. It's here we over. Go. No, they're definitely not doing that. <laughs> but I mean, well, they should be happy. We're out here playing paintball. It's beautiful yeah, weather. Yeah. 
Can't complain. Well, it, it is good for Diesel, though, as we're jumping into this next point, a little bit closer game with the Saints finally stepping up in that last one. Diesel's warming up with the team with yeah. Uprising, and Uprising is the lowest ranked team in their division, so mm -hmm. in their bracket. So it's kind of a must-win situation for them, and they are mm -hmm. acting accordingly with a pretty big spread. Right now, see if uh, Aftermath can answer. They let the Saints get Evan Manners up into the brick. Kerrigan's making the fill. What do you think about that center 50? It doesn't really seem to be super potent on this field here. Um, it is you can get in there. And like the, uh, Aftermath is not, not wide on the Dorito side, so he is just stopping anybody from going anywhere over there. Oh, my oh God. Karen does not other. make the trade of the 50 missing. snake there. Morris just eating up uh, Kerrigan. <sighs> and another. Can't do that. Oh, oh. penalty. Oh, Aftermath drawing the penalty, though, so it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one here. Oh, 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 then oh. Morris, Morris overextends a little bit here. He gets shot. He did not know his team got a penalty. Grayson walking off, kind of wondering what just happened. The guy in the center has no idea where anybody no. is, though, on the side of the field. Yeah. He's been looking the other way the yeah. whole time. Yeah. Um, now that, go ahead, Kelly. Oh, Dorito guy is going to go down, and it's a two on two one. On one yeah. If he just looks, okay, oh, don't but, stand there. But Missouri did not pick up Manners. So Manners did not know that Missouri wow. was making that move, but Missouri didn't know that Manners was in that spot. Man Manners kept his head on a swivel, able to get that kill. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have a tie game here. And this is one that Aftermath is going to want back. I mean, they had Morris in a really good spot. He just won a gunfight with him. Typically, you trade out when somebody's right in front right. of you. He stays alive. Awesome job. But then overextends. Did not know at that same time his team got a penalty. And right. we were just saying penalties, right? Penalties, penalties kill you, yeah. right? Why don't you say that, Kelly? Why don't I, you I always say that. And... Say it every time. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, Jesus. Penalties. Why don't you say it? Gosh. Penalties. Penalties are bad, guys. Penalties are bad. Stop getting penalties. <laughs> Or how about just don't get shot? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, somebody <laughs> had to say it. Cake, bro. Yeah, yeah, somebody cake. had to yeah. say it. Yeah, if you were going to give me one piece of advice, what would it be? Don't, don't get, get shot. shot. Yeah. yeah, don't get shot. <laughs> I mean, if you could shoot people, that's cool, but just right. don't get shot. Correct. So, But there you go. You know, it's a tie ball game now, and there's still a lot of time left on the clock. Big turnaround that match. Yeah, the This Saints. match, on the other hand, it's it a lot get, to a little. Could get out of hand quick here if. Yeah. Uprising, Uprising doesn't a little find more a way to stay alive. They get a little more frustrated, start getting more penalties. Well, and if they can't Diesel stay alive in these confidence. back spots, back spots, just try something more aggressive. Yeah, for sure, hiding in the back isn't working, right? And for sure, losing two on the break isn't working. There's no more. You can't go any farther back. Right. So they need to go up the gut, right? If you can't get outside on either tape, there's only one other place to go. Yeah, we haven't really seen too many by in practice yesterday. In some of the sessions, I saw guys getting shot trying to get to that center brick. Not today. I really haven't seen that yet so far. We'll see it eventually. Mm -hmm. But so that could be a safe spot. It's just where are you going to put your guns? We when guys are putting their guns snake side, that has not been as effective as right. putting that gun towards the D side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we see multiple guys go up to that 50 brick and then just either not see mm -hmm. the guy moving into the snake, even though right. they're definitely looking that way. Yeah, um, it, the, if the snake player stays low, he can go all the way to your side. You yeah. saw it happen to Thomas. That's what happened to Thomas. Thomas, Thomas yeah. knew he went in there. He just didn't know where he went. Right. Yeah, I, I don't like that center brick snake side for sure. Yeah. I don't I like, I don't like, like either one of those towers in the center of the field either. Uprising, big bite on the D side. Go all the way around the corner into D3. Looks like he gets there alive. Oh, Uprising's first five-on-five five breakout here, Matty. Yeah. Makes his snake on break. Yeah, they uh, sent Johnson into the snake off the break. Mouse is actually kind of playing the three back here to start out. J-Rab's at the Aztec, but everyone's alive. It's five on five. Yeah, I think uh, Clint's there to go clean up the first guy. Uh, Mouse is there to clean up, like, to clean up the second, third clean guy. Clean up the rest then, of the team? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then J-Rab closes it out. Well, God, right really now, though, it's a, it's a five on five. They have a four-point lead. There's 10 minutes left on the clock. This probably wouldn't, unless you can yeah. if they take what they're going to give you. But if I was AC, I wouldn't mind having a longer point right now. Yeah. They're, they are in all the spots, though, right now, as long as they just don't look into guns. And they did this yesterday in practice where Mouse comes out to the tape, mm -hmm. Clint Johnson sits inside on the cut, so if they try to come get Mouse, you're gonna, yeah, watching over You're going to see this a lot in the event with the good teams that can get yeah. in there. That's, um, that's the one-two punch right mm -hmm. there. Well, and vice versa. I saw Mouse where Clint was, and, mm -hmm. you know, so they're kind of go, going to go back and forth depending on who's the first to get yep. in there. Diesel dropping their first body yep. over there, dropping their second body. Now three-on-five advantage for Uprising, Matt. It's coming from the D side as uh, now Uprising's past the 50-yard line. This is their opportunity to try to claw a little bit closer here. Still have two bodies to deal with, though, as both Mouse and Clint Johnson are still alive here. Snake side, but it is a three on five right now in favor oh. of Uprising. Oh, but then Nico Uprising. Nico pulling a good shot off yeah, the Nico, that, that, that definitely that saved kill. the point for them right now. Yep. Yeah, huge kill. And now Uprising's got the center cube out of position, playing defensive uh, from that center cube, trying to keep Nico from moving forward. But Nico's on the island over there, so he's not going to move forward. What they need to do is figure out how to get these two guys out of Snake. Yeah, still a yeah. Four, four on and three. And highway's open, right, Kelly? The highway is definitely open right now. And the highway gets you two. 
leaving you guys in a three on one. I'm just not sure. Uprising's not really playing like they know exactly where everybody is. I feel like if they knew it was just the one Dorito player, they might be trying to do a little, a little bit more pressure. But uh, you are going to see this happen too, where the two snake guys make it this far, but they're so hyper focused on what's right in front of them that the Dorito side can still play paintball. Yeah. Well, sure. right. you can turn the field, right? Grandma will just crawled up here mm -hmm. to uh, to get a little bit closer. So, he, yeah. so but that high the highway move they're talking about is the inside portion of the snake. So if you run through that highway, ooh, Borromeo taking the walk does get a kill though on Nico Hyde. So it's a two on three situation. There is no one on that D side. That D side is completely blown open. I don't think they know that there's two in here. I, don't think, I think you're they, right. Or if they do, they certainly don't know where they're at. Uh, Uprising is absolutely playing like there's still a body left alive on that D side. He's gonna go get him. He's gonna get torched. He's lucky if he doesn't get a mm. penalty. Yeah, oh. Graham's going to go right into Johnson's gun. That was just a very, oh, oh and a major see? penalty assessed on Graham Arnold, and that is going to pull out the last two bodies. It's because he tried to pull his gun on, on Mouse. Yeah, but he didn't shoot anybody, right? So how do you get a major when you don't shoot anybody? I don't know. That's a really interesting he, I mean, call. He shot his, if he shot his gun. I think they were so waiting for Clint to make that shot yeah. and so excited when he shot him, they just pulled the penalty. Yeah. Yep. Because you can kind of whip your gun up a little bit, you just can't shoot anybody. Again, got to play the way the refs are making right. it go down, right? And right now, it wasn't one penalty flags. either. It was multiple flags were going up. They Guys, if you're playing this afternoon <laughs> and you're playing in the pro league, Tighten be very bit. careful. Tighten yeah. up a little bit. So we're in the pits with AC. Let's listen in because that was a contested point. Mouse, I need a barrel sock. Someone took mine. That, can one box. of you guys take the Oklahoma? There's one in the box. Can he, can he take the Oklahoma? So they're, but, I think, but they're well, not. you didn't give me enough time. I had just got to Chicago. I gave so much time. Hey, could you? Oh, no, I think you there? just need to play it tighter. Could you hear me? Mm. We were just talking about the Cali, right? When things aren't going well, how are you going to have that communication mm -hmm. with each other? They're not yelling at each other, just right. having a conversation. Asking question. Even though they disagree. Two to two right now is the score. It was Latin states have answered. And right now, the running referees are kind of running oh, all over the no. place right now, checking. Them. So body yep, coming off and a penalty assessed on aftermath. Uh, looks like a body walked off for the Saints as well, too. No, the battle going three, down. Battle going down advantage. on the snake right here. You guys are going to see that happen a lot over the weekend. There's a bounce shot into the back center that is going to be hitting guys if they're not paying attention. That no. Saints now dropping the first player, Maddie. Four on three advantage Saints. Saints guy does not look like he knows. No, no idea. He thinks he's in the 50. Well, he's hitting the bunker. He keeps, so well, yeah, he keeps hitting that bunker. Morris should know that. I think that's Morris. He's Morris in Missouri. He should know he's there. And that bunker's moving around. You know the guys are riding the outside of you. So it's a four on three. three. Only thing stopping the Druid right now is this uh, spot bunker for the Saints. So the Saints. Oh. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> that's going to hurt. Oh, there he is. Well, patience plays out nicely here for uh, Aftermath. Yeah, three on three now. Yeah, the kid from Saints had no idea that no, he was there. Just no clue. This guy can shoot him. Yep. But then the Saints answer as Morris loses a gunfight. That's a tough death for Morris. Yeah, three yeah. on two, Maddie. Advantage for the Saints. Get all the way down there, be patient, and then yeah. wrap and just not close. In a tie game. game. Yeah. The Saints player does not know the corner's hot, I don't think. Um, so the, yeah, they're looking at each other now. He knows it's hot. Communicates back that it's hot. Don't know if the Saints know that it's a three on two, but the guy in the back that's getting no pressure should have some idea what the body count is as loosely as he's playing. Well, Saints are on the offense right now. Yeah. With Quillis. It's, it's a game all of a sudden, right? Yeah. And he's got a body behind him at the spot can. He's got manners uh, at the tower pushing the issue a little bit here. So. And some time to work with. Seven minutes on the clock. Mm -hmm. Aftermath really hurt themselves with that penalty. This is just a situation with these young up-and-coming up pros. I'm thinking, kid, do not die in this spot. You're Correct. in a fortress. You have seven minutes to work with. It's a tie game. Your teammate is right beside you at the tower. You're, he's talking to you. It, Willis cannot die in this spot. Right. 100%. They got to get wider on the Dorito side to pinch out that can. Yeah, he's got um, the ball. Or, yeah, now he's making the right, right moves over there. Try to put some pressure on the Dorito side. Well, makes the move all the way uh, across and into D3. Aftermath fills the corner. That Dorito corner is a very strong bunker. Can see both tapes, communicate really well, has oh. lots of lanes. Oh, key kill, three on one, advantage Saints. 
Only one player left for Aftermath. That's in this Dorito corner. Oh, but Manners gets, gets kill. scalped. And Manners gets scalped over the top, but I think they might have already done enough. There's just that one body left in the back corner of Bunker, mm -hmm. and he's at the tower, and he's going to get taken out. So taking a lead here. Man, with the way the Saints are sitting in last place, just even a win right now oh, would be yeah. great for them. Definitely. Obviously, you know, this is still early on in the tournament, so in their heads they're thinking, hey, man, we're going to try to make a Sunday here and try to save our franchise and get out of that bottom cellar. But taking a lead here against Aftermath, still some time left to go. Now the question is, how is Aftermath going to answer? It's mm -hmm. multiple bad points and mistakes that we've seen out of Aftermath in a row. How are they going to fix it? Man, they just got to stay alive. I mean, they're, they're making to a lot of spots. Shoot your guns, shoot your guy in front of you, and then close smart. Ten seconds. Well, 10 seconds to go before the start of this next point. AC Diesel up by five here on Seattle Uprising. Are we going to see our first Mercy Roll victory of the tournament? About to find out. Snake on the break for AC and the big Dorito, first big Dorito. Uprising's flying down to the Dorito side right now, though. Yeah, all the way into Dorito four and Snake two. They shoot mouse, mouse shot. Yep. Nobody's stopping him right now yeah. besides the guy right in front of him. Five on four situation in favor of Uprising. That's Seven you're, eleven. You were saying earlier, Tally, if they'd have been playing a little more offensively oh. like this earlier, they might have been doing a little bit better. Uprising he, loses their first attacker D side. I think he just shot, got shot down the wire. Nobody else can really shoot him oh. there. Boromeo coming off as well too for Uprising. Do they have a guy in the sneak wise point yeah. playing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Right here on your screen, battle going down in the snake. Oh, Uprising in the black. Oh. AC Diesel from that blue side. Clint Johnson going to move up. He's going to see him through the crack. Nope, does not see him through the Ooh, crack. If he wraps around, he's going to get a free kill on Clint. Oh, free kill here for Seattle Uprising. He should Clint's like, just somebody two, supporting me here? So Diesel down to just two bodies. j Rab's in the spot can. I believe it's Mark Johnson in the uh, <laughs> tower on the D side. Oh, no, they got Dorito yeah. too. So three on three here. Justin's shooting at the, the Dorito player, stopping him from going down the field. You can't overstate how important this point is for Uprising, because if you take a six point, negative six on margin in your very first game, that means you have to blow somebody out that also, and get a giant win, and you need yeah. to get a Mercy Ruin just to get back to even. That also makes it a lot harder for us, too, in the point spread game. Right, in that bracket, right? Mm-hmm. I think great. our bracket's pretty tough. I mean, yeah, you want everybody as close, close to score as possible. Oh, Clint's on their side. Who's, who's? Oh, no, they're, they're this. So 545 left to go. And if you're joining us on social media, please head on over to GoSports.com. Watch the rest of this intense pro paintball battle. It's going to be going down all weekend long. Another body coming out of the snake right now for Uprising. But Graham Arnold had filtered in as the second attacker behind his first attacker. Scotty Knight takes the walk, but unfortunately for him, there's just one body left alive. Yeah, two one on, on two. Yep. Diesel with the advantage. Two bodies left alive. J Rab's looking to drop the hammer running the highway. Trying Justin to find Mark. where he is in the snake. He's looking oh. for it. Doesn't find him quite yet as he has to come oh. all the way around and then just blasts Graham Arnold to get the kill and put the coffin nail in this match and get the six point mercy rule that they were looking. So AC Diesel got a new coach. No A Rod here and looking a lot different. However, they did just play Uprising, who's in the. The, uh, the lowest ranked team in this division. Mm. Mm -hmm. But they did exactly what they needed to do. They shut them out. It's a mercy rule win. The offense looked crisp. Looked like they knew how to play this field. A few mistakes here or there, but it never cost them a point. Right. They definitely had a lot more discipline this match than I've seen them have so far. And they were hitting their shots on the break, which is great. Um, I didn't really see them getting any penalties. Also great. Doing a lot of right things. Yeah, so you got X Factor, Infamous, Diesel, Legion, and Uprising. In bracket C. Mark's got to tell me. I I can't. See. No no no. I, he was. I. He was in the. Mark was in the in the turret. Yeah. Mark was. You know they just mercy rolled a team and they're still being very critical about everything that happened during the point to try to make it even better. That's what you got to do to be the best. That's what all the top teams do. Morris barely getting in there in time. Down by one. Six minutes left to go here. Can aftermath rise to the occasion? They drop a body on the break. But they shoot a body. Four and four, four and they're in the 50 snake, and they're about to be mirrored up here in a second. Well, Morris wins the fight to get in, and he wins the gunfight immediately, too. So positionally looking real good here for Aftermath. Morris with a little two-pack. He's going to get Gladstone to help him out. Morris feasting so far. Gladstone going to take over at the 50 as Morris 
cracks through that 50 yard line and San Diego Aftermath looking real good. You see Saints just tucked in their spots, feeling a ton of pressure. There's Evan Manners on your screen. They also have a player in D1, but it's not looking good here as Saints trying to preserve this lead. Being in that back center on the Drew side in this situation is pretty tough. A lot of paint that can come back into you. Cody Woodruff filtering up the field as well too as another body comes off for the Saints. And there goes another one as well. So pretty easy work for San Diego Aftermath to tie this game up with just about five minutes left to go. And they will be back on the field. So Callie, you guys play, and we'll be in true X-Ball as we uh, have mm -hmm. two minutes in between points now. You guys are gonna play Uprising next. Mm -hmm. They didn't really show us much. I mean, give me your scouting take here on Uprising. Um, I mean, they, they did get shot a lot on the break, so I would expect them to change some stuff up there. Um, it seemed like when they were being aggressive down the Doritos, they were doing a little bit better. Um, other than that, it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's really hard to scout a team that gets blown out like that because they, they have to go back to the drawing board. That's what I was thinking, yeah. too. It kind of makes it really hard for you because you know the very first thing... do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The very first thing out of your mouth was, right. well, they're getting shot a lot off the break, so they're going to switch it up, which now it's like, okay, well, then what, what are they going to do right, next? Right, right, right. It's like you have to almost think, okay, well, what would I do in that situation from where they were getting shot. Yeah, it's almost assume they'll pocket up and then try to figure out how you can contain that pocket. Or, like you said, maybe do a little more offense. You know, get, they weren't getting shot when they made their big moves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They could explore the center more. Um, it seemed like they were getting shot going to Snake a lot. And, and But they were still, you know, able to fill certain places pretty well. So they're not as scared to, to be aggressive, so. Uh, I, I always expect Uprising to just be coming at us no matter what happened the game before. So I, I'm expecting them to be playing us aggressive and, and trying to make a difference in that uh, negative point spread. Yeah, it is a team that likes to play aggressive. Mm -hmm. So I think they're probably going to, yeah, I mean, probably try to take some moves, continue to attack Snake side. I mean, if you're not attacking on the Snake side, it's kind of a rough Snake in the sense that if you don't get that guy in there, and they do, right. uh, it's probably going to be a little <laughs> bit of a rough, unless, unless the guy makes a big mistake. Yeah. I mean, I also saw Clint making the snake a lot on the break. So, you know, that also tells us that they're not shooting the guy on the break. So maybe we can make it far as well. Well, tied up at three. Next set after this is going to be X Factor taking the field for the first time here at the 2023 NXL Mid-Atlantic Major, taking on Legion, who dropped their game to Infamous. Uh, Two-point deficit there for Legion. We're going to see New York Extreme tied for third overall with X Factor. And they're going to be playing Reva, who warmed up in a loss. So doubling up that back center currently for the Latin Saints. And looks like doing a little surgery, too, on their gun. They are going to be shooting Morris. And at this point in time, that's an absolutely huge kill. Morris Definitely. does a lot of work for Aftermath. Yeah. Latin Saints also take a big bite and get to Drew 3 over there. Now fill into the snake. So Saints with better field position and a one-body advantage here in this tie score. And a little bit of time to work with. This is not a blaze down the field, put a guy in and go moment. You have five minutes to work with. Points are averaging, I don't know, maybe two, two minutes-ish, right around there. If the Saints play this play this right, they could win the game in this point. In this point, yeah. Um, especially owning the snake side right here. You just need the snake guy to close smart. Just not die too, right? Not Don't die, but obviously apply the... Uh, uh, Apply pressure properly. Don't just wrap into the back center's gun. Ooh, throw the pod trick. Ooh. Here from the Saints. Does it work out? No, no bite from Gladstone. Yeah, that's where I think you come off of that outside and crawl inside to theirs so that when you bait that guy, he comes to get you. You're the you're second guy needs to do that. Yeah. This guy back here. And if he goes to their side, he shoots that center brick in the back, yeah. which opens up the Saints' the whole Dorito side. Well, two bodies in the snake structure currently for the Saints. And they're playing tight. They're putting pressure down fields, Portman and Kerrigan. And and a good cross-field spread. They also have D3, D1, back center for Saints. So Saints the, being the proactive team out here. After the death of Morris, we haven't seen any offense out of Aftermath. It's kind of almost like Aftermath is trying to lull them into some gunfights they think they can win, mm -hmm. uh, as they are, they are not taking any initiative on the attack once Morris left the field. Yeah, if the second, second snake guy just gets to their end real quick here, he can really break this game open. Maybe he's waiting for the right moment to do it, but... 
Oh, that's missed that fill. Yeah, Aftermath gets out to that baby Dorito. That was a great fill. That doesn't happen if you're in that next knuckle. Nope. Uh -oh. Kerrigan with a little backfill. In Not snake sure about one. That. Now down to 240 on the clock. A couple minutes burnt off in this time match. If Grayson shoots a snake guy, it could go the other way around. Yeah, because he could come in the snake and get a couple. Yeah, there's two in the snake, but they're not really working together, and there's no one stopping the Saints guys. Uh, this, I agree, uh, mm -hmm. Callie, this gunfight right here mm -hmm. uh, between like, Portman and, and uh, Grayson, this is a key gunfight. This could yeah. decide this entire match. Now, Kerrigan is in there, so, and he goes right back into snake two. Got to get those two guys that are in the uh, snake insert and the center brick out of those defensive positions and start pressing forward and play more offensively. Mm -hmm. They're playing as if Aftermath is attacking, but Aftermath is not in attacking situ positions or postures, right? On their knees, crossed up, as tight as they can be. Mm -hmm. Kerrigan's trying to work on getting a kill on across the field into the baby Dorito from that snake two inside. Time taken off, minute 30 now. Could we see an overtime point? Yeah, as, as you like say that, all... Kerrigan turns around and looks at the clock. Yeah. They've been calling the time off. I mean, every 30 seconds or so, I hear somebody oh, say. Oh, there it goes. That's a big kill. That's a big death. Yeah, so body coming off for Aftermath from that D side. Massive kill for the Saints. They've had some really good communication. They've been in good spots, and they're not feeling much pressure now. As the Just three bodies left alive. No one on that D side. And now going to launch with just a minute and seven seconds left to go. Can the Saints shock Aftermath here mm. and win their first game of the, you know, this is the first game that both these teams have played, and it would be an absolute shock to see Aftermath lose in the way, I mean, they were undefeated in the prelims mm -hmm. at the last event. Mm -hmm. Oh. Saints, oh, no. Saints That's got right some work to do. To do. Oh, oh he runs the highway. Does Manners get a penalty? He doesn't. It looks like Portman's going to do oh. something with that chaos. He oh, runs in a major no. penalty assessed on Evan Manners. And that under 60 seconds, that's going to stop the clock. And that is going to give the point here to Aftermath. And that is just a, as Callie was saying, oh, no. You're shaking your head yeah. right now, Callie. Oh, man, we've man. all been there. But that's just a torturous experience here for the Saints. They had the opportunity to win this game and give themselves a much better chance. I mean, not only at doing well here at this tournament, but getting out of the basement in 20th place overall right now and you just cannot be making mistakes it like just, that. That just sucks because that, that was the right idea, just the wrong scene. Um, wrong, wrong execution, right? Yeah, like, you know, he sh obviously that, that center brick switched his gun this way, which is what really tied up the snake side. But, I mean, there's multiple moments there where they had the chance to win that game. The Saints. Yes. Um, and then the guy running through the middle, that's the right idea. He, he could have shot Grayson and then bunkered that, that can in the back, and then it would have been back center, looking the snake way, and he would have had his back as well. So um, it's just right idea. Yeah, it's just a tough situation because they know they, need, they desperately need a win. They know they got a pretty good team on the ropes. And you can see the owner... Uh, Gregory, Greg was very frustrated in there and letting his frustration be known. They have 40 seconds to work with. They're going to be down by one. I think, hmm. was there enough bodies to pull? I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, I'm wondering too. So. Sounds like the ref saying you had enough bodies. Okay, so they sh we'll be with five strong, but with 40 seconds left, way, you know, looking at two, two and a half minutes-ish, kind of as far as average points, it does force the Latin Saints into reckless attack time, and we just we haven't seen that yet on this field. No one's needed to do it. Uh, we thought Legion was going to do it in yeah. the game against you guys, but they didn't really, they, they had a traditional, they had two minutes left, they needed yeah. two points, and they did not go with reckless attack. They went a standard point, it didn't work out. They, yeah, they, I mean, they won a really quick point in our match, but they shot like three of us or four of us on the break. So. Yeah, that was a totally different yeah. story. Totally and then you guys story. can, you know, so you, you had sent Thomas Taylor to the 50, which I thought was an, a great job, a time to do that. Because mm -hmm. when you know when a team, when a team is going to throw haymakers at you, mm -hmm. you need to throw one back. Right. So you send Thomas up there, they end up not going with right. the full on attack. But I do think the Saints are in a position where they cannot go standard breakout right now. You're mm -hmm. going to have to take some risks. Is it going to be the complete, you know, staggered attack flying V? We don't know. I they mean, need, they have guys with wheels. They need to hit some shots, and they need to be aggressive for sure. Yeah, I mean, quick points are typically dictated by how many bodies you shoot on the break. Uh, so you do want to keep a couple bodies in the back to shoot those off the break shots, but then they have to immediately filter up the field. Just question is, where are they going to go? All these teams should have been practicing this exact situation 
this past weekend, so everyone yep. has this play in the bag. It's just, is it going to work, you know, with the tournament yep. refs? Because as we've seen, the refs are not scared to throw some penalties. Definitely and not. This is when you see a lot of those start happening. If we see a, ma is there a major penalty under 60 seconds, the, the time will stop. Other uh, immediate point for the other team. They only have four on the box. Oh, here comes their fifth. Okay. So timeout was called. Yeah, I don't see the, uh, the time ticking off right now quite yet. They're, they're, they're signaling that they need to start with four. Maybe that's why we have a, a, a clock stop. They are starting with four. Yeah. I th yeah, so they're, they're checking out right now. The referees are making sure. There's five, there's five bodies out there. They're throwing them in on the clock. A minute, uh, minute of uh, in-between point time is starting now. And there are still five bodies out with the Saints. He's just trying to tell him what to do before he gets off the field, I think. Mm. Like a field captain. So typically, Callie, this is when I would ask uh, when we have a player of your caliber sitting up here with us. I got Callie Rudolph up here. If you're just joining us from Infamous, they won their first game. I would say, hey, Callie, what's your go-to uh, quick tell play? You. <laughs> no, I, I, I figured that would be the answer. <laughs> it's in Travis's playbook. You got to go find it. <laughs> dig Page it out. 67, <laughs> somewhere near the bottom. We'll tell you, there's there's a lot of different options, though, which is, which is fun. You know, we've had a couple layouts where it's pretty slow, and a lot of time can be burned off but i think there's a lot of different options on this field and especially if you're not hitting your shots on the break it's gonna it's gonna really open up but yep. running through crazy with not a lot of time left with the way the flags are going up it's that's a risk questionable yes yeah through an, another minute on the clock so gonna get things going for potentially the last point uh after this we're gonna be letting cali go is gonna have to get ready for this next mm -hmm. one going to be uh, playing Uprising at 11 o'clock. We will be having paintball legend Shane Pestana come mm -hmm. up to the booth and give us some of his insight as the Ironman going to be playing this afternoon. Their first game will be at 145 against the Hurricanes. Hurricanes. I'll be interested to see how the Hurricanes play this field. Yeah. They had a, they, who they practice? They had a good practice, right? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to think who they practiced against. I talked to some of the guys yesterday kind of the bulk of their starting five or six they seemed very humble but also very confident they're getting to that point in their careers where they know they can make sundays with regularity they know they can be top teams just what are they going to do from there right so but definitely not cocky at all those guys are very humble jumping into it can the saints summon the spirit they're going to lose the body snake side here on the break split screen breakout with just now down to 30 seconds left to go they filter another body out this way and he's going to try to get into the snake and it looks like they're going to get two bodies into the snake clean with time ticking off this clock. Oh, Grayson making it to the corner is really going to slow yeah, it down. Yeah, I was going to say, if they could have caught Grayson going out there, that would have really helped. Oh, oh Grayson, they get that first kill on Kerrigan. He sh he and then here he comes Grayson five? Gladstone to try to save this one. Doesn't know there's another body in there, though, as they go past each other. And Grayson's going to continue his attack with nine seconds left to go. So this that kill from Grayson, Grayson Gladstone definitely buzzer. saved this one here. Grayson's going to hit the buzzer. Grayson Gladstone with three seconds, two. Checks himself. Oh, and just needed what? a couple more seconds. He must have thought that he took some pressure. Well, he definitely checked his hand in the corner when he had the first exchange. He said he got bounced. But still, I mean, if you thought you got shot in the hand and you didn't have a hit there, why not? Well, you could hear him. He said, he's. I didn't want a dirty hang. That's actually really smart. You're going to win the game anyway, right? They love oh, to have yes. that buffer. Right. They love to have that extra point to get that two-point spread. You don't need it. You're already getting the win. The wins are the most important things out here. It's their first match. Still, that's a heads-up play. I like that. that. Smart, yeah. I like that. Smart. Check yourself. There's Grayson Gladstone on your screen with that nice kill, and then blows up in that snake side, even though there's still a body in there, so he lost that guy, but it didn't matter. And uh, almost was able to put that second point up. Doesn't matter. Aftermath takes the victory here, and that's going to do it for this set. Congratulations to Diesel as they completely dismantle Seattle Uprising. Next up is going to be X Factor taking on Legion, New York Extreme, and Revo. Here at the 2023 NXL Mid-Atlantic Major, please head on over to Go Sports to watch the rest of these prelim battles going down here. Best 20 teams in the world. Callie, thank you so much. Thank you. Check out what the infamous boards are doing with Pro DNA. Awesome products uh, coming out. I love the event shirt that you guys did, too. Thank you. Yeah, here, go check yeah. out the infamous booth. Head here at the, the site. Head over to the booth, check out the, the merch, and then also check out our Voltanian paintballs. So we'll be back with more action here on the main center field. I'm Matty Marshall. See you in just a few.
Walker here with Carbon Paintball to discuss the Zero goggle system with you guys. We have the Pro version and then the SLD. What you're going to notice first is the color options. On the Pro, it is a semi-translucent Airflex bottom. Um, that's the mask region. Um, and then with the Solid series, it is just a solid color. It's opaque. Um, they're both exactly the same durometer. They're both the same softness or squishiness. Other than that, you're actually going to get a clear lens with your Pro goggle. Um, they both come with a case. And another cool feature of the Pro model is a dual silicone strap versus a sublimated strap on the SLD. And last but not least is another cool highlight is the Pro has some orange accents versus the SLD comes with black. For more features and information on sizing and pricing, visit carbonpaintball.com.
For the second event of 2022, the NXL headed to Texas for the Lone Star Open. This event was a minor, meaning attendance was not mandatory for the pro teams. But 15 of them still showed up in the quest to put a win on the board early in the season and proved to everyone that they were a contender for the series title. There was a mysterious absence in the list of attending teams. The Latin Saints, even after their big second place finish at the first event, decided not to make the trip, which begged the question, with the war chest as big as the Saints supposedly had, why would they not attend this event? Hey, don't forget, company, company, all right? Also, the NXL threw everyone a curveball, as the layout featured a snake on both sides, but only on half the field. And since this was a blind layout released the day before the event, no one had been able to train for this unconventional situation. Strategy and tactics would evolve in real time. And again, everyone was looking towards San Diego Dynasty, wondering if they could keep up their uncanny ability to put wins on the board. Dynasty had won three major tournaments and 21 games in a row. They had not lost a game in the NXL competitions for 10 months. Boys right here. Light him on fire. Help us meet the drink. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, believe in your brothers. Let's go, boys. Right now. Hey, hey, let's go. 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 As far as us, we have some of the old school, we have some of the new school, and really truly it's just getting us all on the same page. So we've been here for hours talking about this, and everybody has a different idea currently of, of what we should do or how we're gonna do it. We're focusing on, okay, if we get into these situations, how can we work on it? And I, I think you're gonna see a lot of the top teams, the teams that have been around doing that, and I think you're gonna see some of the newer teams just throwing Hail Marys out here. Um, and, and it's a field you can throw Hail Marys on, right? No, sir. No, sir. Hey, get up, stay up, right, damn it? Keep Brown. Enough, man. This isn't hard. You don't have to do anything special. Just don't do anything dumb. Look at the field. They are coming. Have to come. For up and coming teams in the Pro Division, every event is another chance in the battle for relevance. It's a fight to make your opponents respect your very existence and to see your organization as an actual threat. There were a few new Sunday contenders in Texas. Energy Elite and the New Orleans Hurricanes both went three and one to secure their spot. Fate, however, did not favor some of the favorites. Dynasty and X Factor faltered. Baltimore Rebel lost heartbreakers and they didn't move on. No level looked like a top contender in Florida. Things were much different here on this blind layout. A couple of interesting teams that got knocked out. Uh, level, level came after a really good show in last event. They struggled a little bit this event. Hope to see them in the, in the finals in the future. See them do pretty well. Uh, Dynasty finally lost their win streak. They had a huge win streak going in this thing, and they finally got cracked. So we'll look forward to seeing them in the future too. Right out of the gate, the unconventional layout had its fair share of top-end casualties. Day one was a disaster for Dynasty, as they lost both their games to X-Factor and Infamous. They had a negative nine-point spread, and they needed to win both games big on Saturday to have any chance to move forward. The blind layout events, the minors this year, in the Dynasty camp weren't taken very seriously. I hate to say it that way, and we should have taken it seriously because we got beat up. In order to win a paintball tournament, in order to win anything, you need an immense amount of focus. You could have all the talent, you could have all the best players, you could have everything, 